2024 is wrapping up its first month. Donald Trump has been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize for his historic work with the Abraham Accords. Joe Biden has announced he's made his decision, which we believe may be to strike Iran directly, their naval forces, not their uh, country, which could spark World War III, many fear. And Ben Shapiro is the world's number one rapper. So uh, we're getting off to a, to a bang here, and I'm really excited for all of it. But uh, those are the big stories. We also have some other crazy stories. Ron DeSantis is calling out Ilhan Omar after a video surfaced where she's talking about essentially serving Somalia and not the United States, which brings up a lot of criticism from people on social media about Israel. So this will be a fun topic of conversation. Yeah, you know where we're going with this. But uh, uh, we definitely got to talk about what's going on with war. That's the big story. Joe Biden, Donald Trump and all that stuff. Before we do, my friends, head over to factswithben.com. That's F-A-C-T-S with Ben.com. Tom McDonald and Ben Shapiro have released a song last week. It will be tracked by the ratings agencies and Billboard will determine based on these numbers if the song will chart. I believe based on the numbers I have been able to see based on how many streams they got and some other metrics, it looks like not only has Ben Shapiro cracked the number one song worldwide on iTunes, it is extremely likely that Tom McDonald and Ben Shapiro will hit the Hot 100, which is the top 100 songs for the week, which is a tremendous feat. We are not being sponsored in any way by them. I'm friends with these guys. I want to see them succeed. And more importantly, sorry, Tom, sorry, Ben. I care more about giving a middle finger to Billboard, to the ratings agencies, to the corporate press and the gatekeepers who want to keep everybody out, especially independent artists, whatever your politics may be. So we are shouting them out all week. Next week, Tuesday. The charts should drop and we will see where they're at. I think, I got to be honest, there is a decent possibility that they get close to number one. If everyone bought the song at factswithben.com, it's possible ben, Sh ben Shapiro could be the number one Hot 100 song with Tom McDonald. And Tom deserves it for sure because Tom's a hardworking, really talented guy. And I know he brought on Ben just to have a, a laugh and to troll, but I'm really hoping that uh, we can muster up as much as possible. I already bought the song. I hope everybody else does uh, buy the song on Amazon. The link is in, in, the, in the description below to support their work. And uh, hey, look, when I said we want to challenge the, the gatekeepers, we want to build culture. It's not just about the work that we do. It's not, it's not just about the songs we're making. Tom McDonald's an awesome dude. He does hard work. He's got a great message. You should really check out the song if you haven't yet because Ben's in it. And you know it's going to be about it's calling out the woke. It's calling about the constantly offended people and the hypocrisy. So, so do that and uh, shout out to Ben Shapiro, who officially changed his profile to read world's number one rapper. At, I, I guess you could argue, Ben, you know, Tom McDonald is, but you're both sitting there together. So uh, respect. Also head over to castbrew.com, buy our coffee. When you buy our coffee, you're supporting the show and Appalachian Nights, of course, is the best coffee you will ever have. All of our coffee is very delicious, but uh, we, we, we're struggling to keep Appalachian Nights in stock because once people buy it, they try to buy it all out. Now we're, we're out of ground and we're, man. We're getting it restocked, everybody. We're getting restocked. Also, head over to TimCast.com. Click Join Us. Become a member if you'd like to support our work directly. We're going to have a members-only uncensored show coming up at 10 p.m. today. You don't want to miss it because our guest is amazing, and it's going to be a really great conversation. But as a member, you get access to our Discord server. Once you're in the Discord server for at least six months or sign up at the $25 per month level, you can submit questions to call into the show and talk to us and our guests. So smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Joining us tonight to talk about this and everything else, finally, is Styx Hexenhammer, a.k.a. Tar Warwick. Thank you. I'm uh, glad to be here. Grab that mic. Oh, yeah. yeah get pretty Sorry, close. I'm, I'm not used to this particular kind of setup. Uh, who are you? What do you do? Uh, I'm a YouTuber, content creator, and editor, and author, and gardener. Gardner, yeah, right. Uh, you've been around for for a long time. Yeah. I don't really know how to describe your your politics. Independent, anti-establishment, mm, classically liberal. I'd classically say. liberal. Classically liberal. Well, that's easy enough. We're we're glad to have you. Everyone's really excited. There are spoons littering our chat because for those that don't know, uh, that's your like your emoji. I guess people post spoons. Yes. Uh, thank you to all the clankers out there. <laughs> right on. There should be a fun conversation. Thanks for hanging out. We got Carter Banks hanging out. Sub guys, sticks. Great to have you. I'm all Huge fan, been watching your stuff for a while too. Um, so I'm also familiar with the spoon thing. Um, I'm a music guy uh, for Timcast, Trash House Records. 
Um, and we've got Hannah Claire hanging out as well. Hey, I'm Hannah Claire Brimlaw. I'm a writer for Scanner News. That's scnr.com. I'm really happy to be part of that team. Uh, Tim is specifically calling me out because I had no idea what the spoon thing was. It's, uh, she thought it was Seamus. Yeah, I just assume it's Seamus ruining my life forever. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Serge is here. Yes, I am here, and uh, I'm excited for the show today, especially the after questions. So uh, let's so, get to so, it. So basically, what happens is, you know, Seamus is staying at my house, and you know, my my girlfriend notices that the spoon, the the the, the utensil drawer is the spoons are gone, <laughs> and she's like, "Where are our spoons going?" And I'm like, "It's probably Seamus." Well, Seamus would make a cup of coffee, then go downstairs, and then put it in the sink, and he was transporting our spoons one at a time. And then uh, I was like, oh, hey, Seamus, do you have spoons down there? And he's like, yeah. And then he brings them up. It's no big deal. It was like five spoons. And then Seamus just goes, there's an Irishman in my basement who keeps stealing my spoons. And we were like, we're wrong with that. And, that, and that's what we memed it. Anyway, let's jump into the news now that everyone understands the context of Seamus stealing spoons. Uh, from the Post Millennial, Trump nominated for Nobel Peace Prize by GOP rep for historic Abraham Accords. It's not the first time Trump has been nominated for the prestigious award. And I do want to say as we, we, we get going. It doesn't mean all that much. It's a nice thing someone can say, but I do think it matters because Donald Trump, no new wars. Donald Trump setting timelines for bringing our troops out of these countries, trying to get our troops out of Syria, negotiating with some of the worst people in the world. And of course, the Abraham Accords. If anyone deserves this, it's him. However, Barack Obama did end up winning one a long time ago, despite doing nothing. The story is on Tuesday, Rep. Claudia Tenney announced that she had nominated Donald Trump for a Nobel Peace Prize, citing his groundbreaking efforts to foster peace and cooperation between Israel, Bahrain, Morocco, Sudan, and the United Arab Emirates via the highly praised Abraham Accords. Tenney compared the former president's work to that of the 1978 peace agreement between Israel and Saudi Arabia and the 1994 Oslo Accords, both of which were recognized and rewarded by the Nobel Peace Prize Committee. Donald Trump was instrumental in facilitating the first new peace agreement in the Middle East in almost 30 years. For decades, bureaucrats, foreign policy professionals, and international organizations insisted that additional Middle East peace agreements were impossible without a resolution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. President Trump proved that to be false. And she goes on to praise uh, uh, the former president and the work that he did. And it's kind of sad. I got to tell you. Right now, we're looking at Joe Biden, who has announced his decision that he has a decision, not that he's, we don't know exactly what he's going to do, but the speculation is that he will strike the Iranian Navy directly, which would essentially be a unilateral declaration of war and could trigger Iran to officially and formally declare war. And Congress would not have declared that. So that's a disaster. But it's also sad when you realize Donald Trump was president. We had no new wars. He leaves. Everything's falling apart. The Abraham Accords are basically gone. Israel, Gaza, all that conflict, Ukraine, China has deployed warships surrounding Taiwan. Venezuela is going to make a move on Guyana. World War Three may be on the horizon. Houthi rebels are shutting down one of the most prominent shipping lanes in the world to the Red Sea. And none of this is happening when Trump's president. Maybe because why? Trump threatened to nuke people. Is that it? Well, you've also got ECOWAS popping off there in uh, West Africa as well. You've got ECOWAS and uh, the ECOWAS alliance with Nigeria and those other countries. Uh, they were threatening with, uh, uh, what is it, Burkina Faso, Mali, and uh, I can't remember the third country there. Oh, wow. That could pop off as well. Well, I didn't realize it was that bad. <clears throat> now yeah, I've no, lost all hope. It's everywhere. Well, hopefully, you know, if this is the fourth time's the charm, Trump finally gets the Nobel Peace Prize. I mean, way back in the day, Australia, like a, a coalition of Australian um, officials nominated him because they said under the Trump doctrine, he's pulled America to endless wars. And that's been good for the entire world. And now we have Joe Biden, who's like, but I like war. I think this might be fun. Uh, the other thing is that the Nobel Peace Prize decision comes out in October, which would be the most hilarious oh, October wow. twist of all time. That if they actually are like, you know. We're really scared of World War Three, so we're going to give it to Trump. And yeah. the elections three weeks later. But what, are, but what are the odds? Like, close to zero that they actually give it to him. I wonder if you can Why actually... you ruining my dreams? But Very I'm negative. Not, I wonder if you can actually make bets on that. Because apparently, everyone's going to get mad at me for bringing this up, but you can make bets on whether or not Travis Kelsey will propose to Taylor Swift. Like, they're actually offering that on sports books or something like this. So, anyway, we will Terrible not... We will, Don't we take will that not, We will not get into that subject. We'll go back to talking about war... And conflict and the uh, the peace prize. Good. <laughs> Look, I'm I'm sorry. I got to tell you guys, the, it's all fake. Everything's fake. The world's fake. I just I just don't believe anything's real anymore. Everything's conspiracy. Like Truman Show fake or what kind of fake? Yeah, are we I guess talking? because Barack Obama won the Nobel Peace Prize and he did nothing. 
Like, come on. I don't believe it's a real thing. Well, he did. He he became president while being, you know, of color. <laughs> it's pretty big. And, and, and it brought, peace, was that the it brought peace to the world and everyone sang Kumbaya and uh, there were love beads and meditation. You remember just, how great those years were, you know. <laughs> I he did, did you know this actually this is actually funny. He's the um uh, how do I say this? He is the um he holds the record for most children killed by a Nobel Peace Prize winner. What an honor. <laughs> what a distinguished gentleman. I don't, I don't record, know yeah. that that is actually true, but it's a meme. It's like Barack Obama holds the most the, the record for most children killed by a Nobel Peace Prize winner. And uh <laughs> I think that's probably true, because like I don't know, I have to pull up a list of all the other Nobel Prize winners. But uh, he he blew up a lot of them, you know. That was that was his thing. He was unless uh, unless Stalin won a Nobel Peace Prize or something. Right. That's true. I mean, Hitler was on the cover of Time Magazine. He was Person of the Year, you know. And then, <laughs> well, so was Obama. <laughs> <laughs> what are you suggesting? One substantially worse than the other, but Obama was pretty bad. Yeah, I don't know, man. And, and then the Look, dude that he uh, that uh, he mentored, Joe, he's uh, somehow managed to do even worse. I have to, I have to imagine we, we we've been speculating this since Joe Biden got the presidency. I don't want to say got elected, got the presidency. <laughs> uh, that he's basically just like this rag doll they threw in the room so that they can do all of the bad things they want to do, and then make him the pariah, basically. So they're thinking like, okay, we need to go war here, 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 and here. Whoever we put in, whoever does this, it's going to destroy them. Ah, Joe Biden, he's, he's, he's basically dead anyway, right? He's got like, he's, he's passed the average life expectancy of the U.S. male. He's got plates in his brain. What does he care? We'll tell him we'll pardon his son or something. They did and, just assume he'd be inc incredibly submissive, right? They did just say he'll he'll listen to us and he'll follow what we want, which I think is sort of the problem right now. I think they actually did want him to be a one-term president and he is kicking and screaming he and Jill do not want to leave the White House. I don't know. I can't believe that. I think it's kind of like his ego rubs up uh, against their agenda. Like, they want him gone. They want to do their own, like, neocon, neolib thing. But he's still like that, you know, long ago he was a fiery dude. If you look at him when he was in the Senate, he was rather forceful he's got yeah. a big ego he talks about wrapping a chain around corn pop's head and weird right. stuff like that <laughs> I, was, barrel. I was a bad dude back in the 1960s let no, me no, tell you no no he said corn pop was the bad dude uh, corn right. pop but, yeah. but, but i gotta be honest when i hear that story about how you know corn pop was threatening him I, i'm willing to <laughs> like you he he joe biden said i'm sitting in the pool and the kids are rubbing my legs I got hairy legs and i'm just like corn pop probably saw joe biden doing some weird stuff with kids and was like yo we're going to stop you. And that's when Joe pulled out a chain and like banged it on the ground. Right. But Rain off. Barrel got it rusty. That's right. Be <laughs> interesting to see like what. So many details. From Corn Pop's point of view, what happened. Yeah. Why can we never find Corn Pop? That's the big question. Is it would be know. very, po very politician of him to take this story where potentially someone was like, hey, leave those kids alone. And he's like, and it turns out I scared that that guy off. Look, it was it works in my favor. Like, or it, or it turns out that Corn Pop is black and got racially profiled. No, he was. No, oh. I'm pretty sure Corn Pop's a black dude. Oh God! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that. That was. That's not even a surprise. Yeah, and then someone made an animation of how he was talking about the kids oh, yeah. rub his legs. Like, dude, that's the so guy, weird. he, you know, his story is that Corn Pop wasn't wearing what his 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 bathing cap or something I, like that. He something him, like that. He called something him bizarre. Esther. I thought. Yeah, I, I called him Esther. Yeah, I don't know. I thought he he dived off the board the wrong way. If I remember correctly. Or he was running or something. Yeah. I don't know. I think. All I know is his story is total bs <laughs> like the reality is prop is probably there is no corn pop i didn't was. think there was but i almost yeah. wish it was real me too because that would be <laughs> just the best thing ever if it was if, it, if if corn pop was a real dude i'd imagine he was like a good guy who yeah. was like watching joe biden creep on kids right and he was a leader of a bunch of he ran a bunch of bad dudes and his said. and his daughter was at the pool that day yeah so bad dudes that's were what like corn pop saw church going young men who didn't like watching joe biden like grope little girls or something is that is that what like why is this guy a lifeguard he shouldn't be here yeah, <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Want him gone. i mean but to your I point i don't know if this has to do with war or anything but you know <laughs> i was gonna it's say funny anyway <laughs> uh, yeah I, I think it's good to speculate about to question joe biden who who gets caught in all kinds of lies all the time but to your point video of him exists where he is sort of speaking forcefully he was influential he did have a career in politics for some time <laughs> and i think that underscores sort of how serious his decline is i mean he's the oldest president in the country's history he wants to be the second he wants to defeat himself for that title uh but trump isn't young trump is trump is in his like what late mid mid 77 78 yeah so he's late 70s he's 
way more cognitively together than Biden is. There are tons, I mean, even like Chuck Grassley in Iowa, he is in his 80s and he is more together than, than Biden is right now. The fact that Biden is actively slurring and it, it's not even a question of just like, we don't like this guy. He is declining so rapidly, it's undeniable. I think that's one of the reasons why the uh, Democrats have turned against him. We have all kinds of Democrats who say he's too old to be there. And at least on paper, he has access to the nuclear codes, which really should terrify people. I know he, he obviously has handlers behind the scenes that do most of the stuff for him. Like a lot of the decisions that which he is also worse. makes aren't. Yeah, exactly. I mean, which one is worse? The person in charge of the nuclear arsenal and everything else that goes on at the executive capacity is completely out to lunch or a bunch of other people that aren't out to lunch and clearly are malevolent. They're the ones in charge and he's just a figurehead. I don't know which one is scarier. I think it's honestly. actually a little bit of both. All right. I agree. And, and here's how I see it. Joe Biden's in charge, but incoherent. Yeah. And so people are just like, Matt, you know, we're all sitting at this big table. It's funny because people can't see it whenever they come here. They're like, this room is so big. It's like, yeah, it's like 15 by 35 or whatever. <laughs> but the table's massive. So you got all these people sitting around the situation room and, you know, a missile just struck a U.S. military base in Iraq. And then the president is briefed and he's sitting there and he's got this look on his face or he's, he's wearing aviators and eating ice cream because, you know, it, it helps people with Alzheimer's. And then uh, they're like, Mr. President, what are we doing? He's like, come on, man, you know, we got, got a gotcha bow. Get it, bro. And they're like, uh, and they look at each other like, uh, yeah, uh, whatever you say, Mr. President. Then he leaves and they're like, what, what do we do? I don't know what he said. Like, what, what are we supposed to do? Don't worry, he'll forget by tomorrow whatever he was trying to say. So just just do something. And there, I, I really do think this. Because when you look at Afghanistan, it doesn't even look like a coherent plan to fail on purpose. Like abandoning Bagram Air Force Base in the middle of the night and, and letting random people ransack it. I'm like, there are better ways to pull out of Afghanistan in a way that props up your enemies. And there are better ways to pull out of Afghanistan correctly. And nothing was executed properly. And the stories we learned about the, the, uh, the withdrawal from Afghanistan was that all of these different military leaders were just like frantically confused and didn't know what was going on. And this is how you end up with, so like you had um, Afghani security forces flying helicopters, just land them and get out and run, run, run in a random direction because there was no logistics. Once the Air Force base shut down and the U.S. just stopped, these guys are like, hello, hello, like what's happening? Like we're cut off and they're like, I'm out of here, dude, because you're, you're no longer working for any cohesive unit. Seems to me more like Joe Biden says, Truning on a shot of pressure. And then everyone's just like, I have no idea what to do. And so they just do whatever. And it's totally just with, without coordination. Yeah, I, I think it is a mix of the two. It was funny because uh, Biden did have the coherence to call the then president of Afghanistan before everything happened and say, oh, just lie to people and tell them that it's OK, because we need time to coordinate the withdrawal that he pushed back unilaterally. <laughs> but then they didn't actually withdraw any of the materials. Right. The, the man is clearly sick. Uh, anyone, and even the liberals, I think, know it. It's just that they don't want to admit to the fact that Joe Biden quite clearly has difficulty. So they cope with it by pointing out some verbal flaw that Donald Trump had, right. you know, a week ago. Yeah, exactly. They, they point out some flaw in his wording. So he used the wrong word. He referred to Nikki Haley as Nancy Pelosi, which... I think was kind of on the nose. <laughs> Maybe basically that was the same on purpose. Thing. Exactly. Yeah, basically are the same ideologically uh, in order to cope with it. Yeah. And it's just, oh, it's just man. a mess. You know, I think leftists want Biden because they actually agree with me. And what I said was in 2019, 2020, if you think Donald Trump really is going to destroy this country and destroy our democracy and you're a leftist, he's your guy. Yeah. Because you vote for Joe Biden and you are empowering the banksters, the corporations, and you are giving them their stranglehold on this. But if you vote for Donald Trump, he'll give you everything you think is coming. Destruction. Here's the truth. They do agree with me in essence, but not on who's going to cause the destruction. They actually agree with me wholeheartedly. Joe Biden is, and, and us. Joe Biden will destroy the country. Donald Trump will fix the country. They do want Joe Biden to destroy the country. So they vote for Joe Biden. If they, if they, if they actually thought Trump was that bad, They'd vote for him. Yeah. But the truth is they know Donald Trump will make America great again, secure the borders, bring back jobs. They don't want that. They want Biden's Alzheimer's-ish-esque catastrophe, war, conflict, crisis. They want to be able, they want to see the United States fall apart. And, and it makes a lot of sense from the perspective of the left. 
empower, uh, why, you know, you, you wonder why it is the leftists are supporting the FBI. The FBI is going after Trump supporters. That's perfect. One, I, I've been saying this consistently. Uh, uh, the win condition for the left is the start of a civil war, not winning a civil war. They, they want the system to shatter in half. And that gives them basically, it throws the whole machine into disarray. And then they can start doing whatever they want. Imagine Chaz Chop, but with no federal authority at all. Nothing to do. And it's already bad enough. There's barely any. Chaz, like uh, the Chaz Garden? That's right. Uh, well, then uh, everyone will definitely starve to death. <laughs> yeah, but I, but it, it's, it's, we can make fun of these people for their inability to actually farm in any capacity. But think about what that means. It means roving bands of communist barbarians raiding pantries and farms because they don't want to starve to death and they're dangerous, violent extremists. So if the country actually, you know, if Texas kicks off into some kind of, you know, Fed versus state dispute and then, you know, Trump has already called on states to deploy their National Guard. Several already have. I think 10 different states have sent law enforcement or National Guard. Let's say the conflict actually breaks off. We don't call it a civil war for the time being. But then Joe Biden makes a move to try and suspend like, oh, you know, Florida has been supplying aid to Texas in this conflict. So they send feds down to Florida to try and then the, then state troopers in Florida are fighting with feds. And now we're like, holy crap, this has begun. These Chaz Chop people are going to be like, now's our chance. And they're going to immediately be like, the feds can't stop us. Local government can't stop us. And the reality is, I think if you look at who's more organized, I would argue that in the event something like that happens, the far left will be more organized than law enforcement. And the reason is the, the, the Antifa cells are in loose communication with each other, but they have no external threat factor. If the federal government gets into it with Texas... And it's like, it's very light. I don't know if this, this, this will actually escalate. The Border Patrol has already sided with Texas National Guard. We'll see where that goes. But let's say the conflict between the feds and, the, and, the, and Texas escalates into several other states. It's like a Mexican standoff. The feds are way too uh, preoccupied, are not going to be able to muster up any kind of forces to stop far left, far left extremists from seizing territory in major cities. And local police cut off from the feds are going to just ditch. They're going to be like, I'm out. We it, it, remember what happened when the far leftists went to the police station in Minnesota, in Minneapolis. What happened? All the cops ran full speed out of the building. They were not organized in the way people think they are. The far left is, or at least willing to do crazy things. So that's what I kind of see happening. I don't know. Well, at least in the case with Texas, I think it's more likely to be protracted litigation than any uh, than anything else. And for political reasons alone. I personally think, this is just my opinion, we'll see if you agree with this, I think the Biden administration is going to blink. I think that when they see half the states in the United States are on paper against them, when they see that the vast majority of the population, including most independent voters, are completely against them with regards to the border crisis, eventually it'll become politically too tenuous for Joe Biden to maintain his position. He's either going to do a 180 or he's going to get crushed politically. And then, and then the most likely outcome is that the left tries to take a shot at Trump or something like that, unfortunately. Unless they false flag something. Possible. So it depends on what you think, how desperate you think the feds are and how depraved they are. Right now, the challenge is if Joe Biden, like the, the Border Patrol saying, no, we agree with Texas on this one. We're not going to we're not going to be arresting them or stopping them from securing the border. I mean, that's. That's showing the emperor has no clothes. Joe Biden has no command over his law enforcement agents. Mm -hmm. They win the Supreme Court ruling on the ability to tear down these barricades and Border Patrol, just out, the union outright said, nah. How desperate will the federal government be to assert their authority, federal supremacy? They may not care that much. Biden may just be feckless and go, you know, and just disappear. But that creates a, another big risk. Or maybe not. Maybe it's their win condition. Uh, showing that states now have supremacy in the law over the federal government because of what Texas did, other states are going to follow suit. It's uh, it's blood in the water. The sharks will come. But they've already been doing so. I mean, uh, of a handful of states and, and cities as well have been openly ignoring the immigration law anyway. Yep. The sanctuaries, I mean, they completely ignored Trump. They wouldn't work with him. They won't work with ICE or anything like that. So there's already a precedent. Of course. So it, basically, it's nothing new under the sun. Kind but of. It, but it's an escalation. Yeah. And a course. serious one at that. It's one thing when... You know, what's happening with sanctuary states and cities. Federal government will say, hey, we want you to, you know, arrest these illegal immigrants. They say we will not cooperate with the federal authorities. But when ICE shows up, they don't stop them. ICE walks in, makes the arrests 
And they just say, we won't assist you in any of this. So it's passive resistance. They've not actually confronted. Imagine if in California, when ICE shows up to deport some illegal immigrant, California National Guard blocks them from doing so. That's where we're at with Texas. So what we've seen with sanctuary states and cities so far has just been passive. The Texas move is active resistance. They deployed armed soldiers. If that is the next step and the Biden administration's response is, well, gosh, darn it, whatever. Other states are going to be like, we, our laws matter more. And think about what te- this means for Texas. Texas allows you to have a suppressor for your gun so long as it's bought in Texas and they don't require you to get the federal registration that you need to get uh, anywhere else, which is in defiance of federal regulation. Based. The NFA. Yeah. So uh, the, the National Firearms Act and its modifications mean that if you want to get a suppressor for your gun, you got to fill out this, these crazy federal forms. It takes a long time. Uh, you got to pay $200. I think it takes up to a year for some people, uh, eight months to a year. In Texas, they're like, no, you can buy one. We won't arrest you for it. The feds might get mad about it. Screw them. Already, you see the passive rejection of federal law in Texas, and other states are following suit with gun sanctuaries. I wonder if, if the federal government really does fear that this is one grain of sand too many, actively resisting with armed soldiers, and they decide they do want to play hardball. It's not going to be Border Patrol agents walking up and being like, well, you know, we got to do what we got to do. It's going to be a false flag. It's going to be a psyop. It's going to be it's going to be real war. And I love this when the media says conspiracies aren't real and they say, oh, conspiracy theory. It's like if you think governments are are declaring it's, it's like the colonial era warfare of people marching down the fields, pointing guns at each other. You're you're a moron. And of course, the media wants people to believe that. But real war is going to be the Biden administration saying, I don't care how suppress Texas. Let's figure that out. And that would be false flag. We've got you got a convoy heading down to the border right now. You've got a bunch of private militia people saying they're going down to the border. And all it takes is one Fed to show up wearing a MAGA hat. I think I tend to agree with you that I think the Biden administration will blink. And I think what's interesting is that they are already trying to spin the narrative as fast as they can. So when mm-hmm. Mayorkas released this letter today saying, you know, I'm not going to appear in front of the House um, Homeland Security, you guys made it difficult. He, I mean, it's a long letter where he's saying, you guys made it difficult to schedule and then you asked for written testimony and actually I'm really good at my job and actually we've deported tons of people, more people than Trump has ever deported. And, you know, it, he is desperately trying to make the case that he is both good at his job and also there's a whole section where he talks about how he's received accolades from the Biden administration. He's gotten, he's been uh, rewarded for his service. And so in some ways it has made me wonder if Mayorkas knows on some level that Biden could potentially ask for his resignation as a way to say, like, look, I'm compromising you with you Republicans. I'll get rid of the DHS secretary. And then you guys have to come to the table when it comes to congressional nominations, because that's what they're saying right now. They're saying, actually, the only way to change the border situation, they being, you know, Democrats, sort of left leaning politicians, the only way to change the situation at the border is in Congress. And actually, the Biden administration can't do anything. And this is where I start to think that the Biden administration knows they're on the losing end of this and they are likely to try and spin or back out of the position they put themselves in the funny part is that the thing that might stop a potential false flag in a greater border crisis would be biden's ego because again he does the strong man thing he in his mind because he's a little bit scrambled he's still 30 40 years old he's still beating up corn pop and stuff like that and so to save his lagging presidency and really genuinely try to get another term he might slip his handlers he might fire mayorkas uh, he may yeah. not. He may reprimand him or something like that. He could do a total 180. We've seen this on energy. Uh, one day he's approving new drilling leases. The next day he's canceling a pipeline. The next day he's okaying more exports. And the next day he's blocking exports. It doesn't even make any sense. That's why it's I think completely it's completely incoherent. That, that's why I was saying I think it's a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. That there are some people making independent decisions. I, I bet a lot of his staff are going, this guy's out of his mind. I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to go do it. I'm going to do whatever I want. The other half are like, I have no idea what he said. I'm just going to do something random. And so it's a mix of incoherence and just people running, running you know, their own show. It's yeah. a bad sign for a reelection. There's no clear leadership in this White House. And if you look at his record, it's inconsistent across the board on a lot of things. I mean, again, I, it, of course, you know, it's easy to make fun of her, but Corinne Jean-Pierre is constantly saying things that then get immediately disproven or challenged in the White House press, press by the White House press corps. And so the administration, to me, 
reads as weak. I obviously have some of my own bias because they do a lot of stuff I wouldn't agree with and anyways, but their messaging is constantly trying to spin and redirect and look the other way. And that to me says that they have no plan. It's very different from the things you hear coming out of, you know, not even just Trump, but any, you know, conservative leaning politician right now. Well, Karine Jean-Pierre's got her own problems. Uh, she rarely knows what she's talking about. <laughs> No, she never knows. She's, she's and you, you think she must be angry at a certain point, being like, you guys send me out there and I look stupid every day. But <laughs> she she makes it clear that she's angry every single day. That's the, <laughs> that's the thing. It's wild. Uh, it doesn't make you miss Jen Psaki at all. Yeah, at least that was funny because you had the circle back around memes. Yeah. And I, dressing like, uh, what was that character from Peanuts? And she always wore like the, the green shirt and stuff. Uh, was, it, was it Peppermint Patty? Maybe. Oh, the tomboy yeah. chick with the green shirt and stuff and, and oh, Jen Psaki always yeah, and Jen Psaki always looked like her and acted <laughs> like her too. I don't know. Peppermint Patty. I feel like Jen Psaki made a good exit of the <clears throat> Biden administration when she did. She, they were like two years in, she was like, I'm gonna pass the torch yeah. to this, you know, young lady of color and I'm gonna go get my own show and I'm gonna leave <laughs> this shipwreck behind. She was good at her job. She uh, she made a great decision. She did. Best decision but of her life. As much as people were like, I can't stand her, she's lying. I'm like, Yeah, yeah, but she she was that's also her job to lie oh of course to spin but she was good at it we ju we just know she's lying and the press they're morons and they they, they buy into it Karine jean pierre is just like one of the stupidest people <laughs> just in general and it's just it's it's amazing how every day there's some kind of scandal where she says something moronic and just the whole the white house looks ridiculous mm -hmm. there was a whole i don't blame her for all of it biden is ridiculous you know but, but, also, she, but she makes Biden look coherent sometimes. <laughs> That's the whole problem. I mean, look at Kamala yeah. Harris too. It's like uh, it's it's a maybe a barrel was, of monkeys. Could you imagine? Like, what if what if Kamala Harris is this super intelligent, articulate, witty, fast talker, and and what happens is her handlers come to her and say, "You will not upstage the president." Is that clear? <laughs> and she's like, what is that supposed to mean? I mean, how am I supposed to articulate my thoughts in public and explain this to the people in a way that's that's manageable if I have to talk like I'm stupider than Joe Biden? Figure it out. <laughs> she's like, oh, my God. She goes home to her husband and she's like, they're threatening me that if I don't, that if I make Joe Biden look stupid, I'm in trouble. And the next day she walks out on stage to give her speech. She goes, community is our community. And that's the story of how uh, I imagine know. herself practicing in the mirror every morning. <laughs> and the second gentleman is like, you're doing great. Just let us keep the cool house. Also, I got a <laughs> demeaning title, second gentleman. I don't really like that. <laughs> so funny, she, dude. she could also be a, a method actor like George W. playing dumb. Ooh. That's I honestly possible too. I, I've, I've always thought that George W. was actually very cunning. And he realized that he could get away with a lot more if he played the befuddled like Yep. Slightly hazy, slightly but retarded, likeable. older dude. Right. And then Dick Cheney takes the rap because Dick Cheney's there behind the curtain, <laughs> rubbing his hands we're together gonna drop evilly. Some bombs. Yeah, we're going to kill the children. <laughs> and then her daughter was going like, I, I look up to you, daddy. And he's like, that's right. I mean, granted, she was an old woman when he was president, but still. Uh, I, I think Kamala Harris is much, you know what I really can't stand is the people who assume all these people are stupid. Mm -hmm. When they're like, the leftists will say Donald Trump's a moron. He's so stupid. I watched some ad some guy made against Donald Trump and they're like, his bankruptcies should have ended his business, no. but his bank buddies bailed him out. I'm like, Donald Trump had 500 businesses and five of them had bankruptcies and they weren't even his core business. The Trump, uh, the Trump organization was doing fine and generating a ton of money. If you think Joe Biden is stupid, you are incorrect. He may be incoherent old with a broken brain by today. By, by today. That's fair. That's fair. I don't think Kamala Harris is stupid. I mm -hmm. think she's probably doing what you're describing, tr making herself look as dumb as possible for some reason that benefits her. You don't get to her position by being stupid. I, there, there, are, there are people who, who want to believe, and it's, I think it's more of a leftist idea, that people in positions of power and wealth are undeserving of their power and wealth. And it may be undeserving as an opinion, depends on what you mean by undeserving. But they typically are saying like, this guy did nothing to, to get where he is. Donald Trump's so stupid, his dad gave him the money. No, Trump did get money from his dad, but he still had to build all of this. There are a lot of people who inherited money who went nowhere and fizzled out. People uh, who work hard are smart enough and, and have the merit or are evil enough, are going to get ahead. Kamala Harris sounds really dumb when she gives speeches, but I don't believe for a second that she's that stupid. Exactly.
Yeah. yeah. I don't think she is necessarily stupid. I think she is somewhat self-absorbed, right? Like, I don't think she genuinely entered politics, you know, to serve the people. Not that very many do, although I think there are some who think maybe in the beginning they can help. Uh, I think ultimately she saw being Biden's VP as the chance to springboard her potential run for the presidency, and she was never able to poll favorably enough. I mean, her likability was always low, even lower than Biden's. I mean, you know, Biden got to hang out with Obama for a couple of years. People had a somewhat friendly uh, view of him, but she just became worse and worse and worse. She was almost a surprising VP pick to me because, you know, other than maybe the Democratic demographic position she holds her personality just never resonated with anyone at all and and you know that jill actively hates her i th i think literally they chose her for biden because here's this old white dude yeah. he's not really yeah. Yeah. woke to the demographics of the modern democratic party certainly not to the left so they decided to get a younger individual who's female who's of color or whatever they're, they're people of color or colored people whatever term they're using these days on the left it's a it's a different one every day uh just to counterbalance and apparently there were uh, stories this was last year even the year before that that like jill biden's people actively hate kamala harris's people like they That's literally funny. viscerally hate one another i think they all hate each other yeah just all of them well, I mean, well, Joe Joe would refer to her as the help in his uh, normal company. You know? <laughs> <laughs> let's let's talk about the ramifications of uh, failing Joe Biden administration. That, and that is CNN reports. Biden says he has decided how to respond to attack in Jordan. He didn't say exactly how, but the previous reporting was that Biden was considering striking Iran directly. And I mean, the Iranian government, their naval vessels in the Persian Gulf in response to the drone attack that killed three and injured 34. This many speculate would be uh, could ignite world war three i'm i'm i gotta be honest guys i don't care for the is it world war three because it's been said 50 million times over the past two years by a ton of different politicians across europe it may be already happening but i will say this is this has been i think it's very clear the administration's intention was to target iran directly lindsey graham called for it right many other politicians called for it and this would be a unilateral declaration of war against a major nation. People in the United States don't understand. They hear Iran and they think Iraq. You look at the map. I Iraq is not the same as Iran. Iran is a massive mountainous developed nation with resources. The reason why it was easy for the United States to go into Iraq and Afghanistan, lesser developed nations. The reason why the U.S. has struggled to go after Iran, surface to air missiles. And the U.S. relies on air superiority plus to mountainous, mountainous country. Going to war with Iran would be massive. I mean, the biggest war since, I mean, I don't even know. I, I, I imagine, you know, it's, it's hard to say because during the, the Cold War period, all these are basically proxy wars, Vietnam, Korea, uh, etc. But a war with Iran would be would be massive. Joe Biden may be on the brink of, of, of making that move. And we can only hope that if he does, Iran decides not to make a formal declaration. I'm hoping that, too. Uh, one thing I would say is that it's, it wouldn't just be a war with Iran, though. It would also be a war with Syria. It would presumptively, potentially at least, be a war with Iraq. Their government could end up getting overthrown by the Shia majority. And then they install someone that will side with the Iranians and the Syrians, too. It would be the most major conflict, at the very least, since that we've been in since Vietnam. What's Pro the, technically since World War II, I actually. Don't, I don't know enough about the differing uh, views between Iran and Afghanistan or the Taliban, but I'm wondering... Well, they're what, Sunni, I think, mainly. Right. Uh, so I'm wondering what the possibility that Iran goes to Af the, the Taliban and says, we can maintain those weapons and that equipment for you. Have fun. Hmm. Right. Weaponize the Taliban against the United States and, and, and the U.S.'s allies in the region with all the weapons left by the United States in Afghanistan. I, I swear it's like they did it on purpose. It's absolutely insane that we are facing war with Iran and literally next door is billions of dollars in war machines left by Joe Biden's failed administration. Well, Iran has its own weapon systems, too. They are, yeah. uh, they're, they're no slouches when it comes to missile systems. They've done pretty well for themselves. Right. They wouldn't be able to achieve air superiority, but definitely trying to occupy an area of that size is a little bit different from going into uh, Gaza or something like that. Plus, oil. I think the people, yeah, I think the mm. people are underestimating the risk, actually. And my hope is that Biden doesn't get his false flag event or whatever else he needs to start a war there. 
He gets shuffled out of office. Trump is back. He knows how to negotiate with these countries. And then hopefully we can put the genie back in the bottle. That's the biggest hope. Do you think it could hold on for that long, though? I really hope so. Yeah. Because, I mean, the alternative is millions of dead people, probably. I know. So. It's not good. That's that's the hardest thing about the Biden administration, which is that it is volatile and also seems to benefit from uh, the anxiety it creates in voters. So in some ways, I could see a scenario where, you know, Joe Biden... I, I don't know how consciously, but wants the American voters to think we're on the brink of war for as long as possible, which ultimately creates a much more unstable position mm -hmm. with any other foreign government that we're negotiating with. The real danger, though, is that uh, you know that uh, America's enemies would like Biden to be reelected. And being a wartime president tends to lead to re higher reelectability. Now, I don't know if that's the case because Trump is also he's he's a former president. So the, the, the metric is different than we've seen in a long time. But the real risk is that Iran will deliberately antagonize or one of these other countries specifically to get Joe Biden reelected. Wild. It's crazy how obvious it is that the international community regards Trump as the stronger of the two right. candidates. Well, I was just thinking, like, what if Trump starts negotiating with people like with the assumption that he'll be in charge? Because it's kind of like we saw a little bit of that with the whole Texas thing when he said, he was saying send people. right, I was like, huh. And, and when that happened, when Trump said, you know, other states who support Texas, you should send your National Guards, there was a moment where I thought Democrats are going to, again, go after him for Me saying too. an That's insurrection. Why I, was a, I was afraid to even say that, but it's like, I mean. Donald uh, Trump is effectively attempting to act as though he is the president, and, like like the acting president or, or a pseudo president in exile or something. Mm -hmm. It's basically an election strategy. It seems to be working. He's four right. points ahead in the RCP aggregate almost. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, he's he's running six and a half points ahead of where he was at any time in 2016, almost uh, 15 points ahead of where he was in 2020. It's actually massive. And he's about to win the Nobel Peace Prize. I mean, this <laughs> man can do it all. Peace. Key no, word. That is true. Key, key <laughs> word. It is interesting that Trump has uh, clearly cemented himself, in my opinion, as the Republican uh, nominee going mm. forward. And we're still sort of dancing around the primaries like this is this is going to be a thing that happens do you have uh do you have thoughts on nikki haley's statement that she's going to stay until uh super, super tuesday wow. she, she's going to get humiliated in her home state and she either drops out then or she stubbornly stays in through the very end hoping that donald trump croaks or is disqualified in a brokered convention one of those two things will happen she either drops right after or she stays in through the whole thing and never drops Oh, and, and, and just as a thorn in the side. We're doing a live event uh, on March 5th that I was like, we'll do a live Super Tuesday event, which makes no sense to be completely honest, <laughs> because it's not really Super Tuesday. It's this weird pseudo primary where it's everybody- Trump Tuesday. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> but because Nikki Haley keeps screeching like a banshee from the background, people are like, I guess there's some kind of race going on. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I feel kind of, I, I honestly, I feel bad calling it a Super Tuesday event. <laughs> Maybe we should just call it like Trump wins again Tuesday. Just an average Tuesday in November. <laughs> yeah, right, in March. Taco you Tuesday. Just an average exactly. Tuesday. Exactly. Yeah. You should do Taco Tuesday in here and everyone eats tacos and just like sits there and oh, laughs hey, at Oh, hey, look Nikki at that. Haley. Nikki Haley was getting votes for some reason. Yeah. Anyway. Oh. She's 80 points behind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the I was watching um, MSNBC the night of the Iowa caucus and they're all sort of anxious and upset about what's going on. They're like, well, I mean, what Trump's team is really trying to figure out if, if, is, is if he can get more than 50 percent, because, you know, that's the victory they actually want. We don't think he's going to get it. And then he pulled it like 51. And then New Hampshire was even higher. And, and then so I loved it how DeSantis edged her out. I was so, so <laughs> grateful about that. Like, I was never team DeSantis, but... I swore up and down I would never insult DeSantis or any of his influencers again, and I hold by that if he managed to edge her out in Iowa despite being behind in the polls, just yeah. by two points, but it was just enough so that Nikki Haley, she couldn't even, she didn't even have time to change her speech, you remember that? Right. Like, yeah. it clearly it's she expected to come in. It's a two-person race. It's a two-person race. Well, who are these two people? <laughs> I am not one not of you. them. Yeah, but then Ron dropped out. Yeah. 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 So he, maybe she's just psychic. Maybe she knew she was pressing Ron to get out. <laughs> Uh, she's such a strange candidate to me because she seems so unlikable. And mm. I think South Carolina is going to be so rough. I mean, every I, there are there any other South Carolina leading uh, elected officials that can endorse her? I mean, Henry McMaster's has no. always been behind Trump. They've all endorsed Trump. They've all endorsed Trump. It's just about, here, here's a question, though, uh, you can answer. Who's more dislikable, Kamala Harris or Nikki Haley? Because for me, it's difficult to actually determine yeah, because, right. the, I mean, they're similar in many ways, so. 
I guess. I wonder what's like, the only way I can rephrase it is if someone called you one of the two, which would be more insulting. And I don't know that either. <laughs> Uh, do you have a guess on who? Whoa, Trump- wait, 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 what you're saying? Nikki Haley versus Kamala Harris. Which I mean, one is more unlikable? Kamala Harris. And oh. and if someone called me Nikki Haley, I'd be like, hey. If someone called me Kamala Harris, I'd be like, hey. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> like Kamala Harris is accused of many things yeah. in order to build up her career. With I Willie think Brown. no, no, no. no, no Nikki mean? Haley is too. Is she really? What? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, she had several allegations that she had affairs, didn't she? And at the very Just least, recently. she but, made but, her husband change his name, which is yeah, unusual. That's true. <laughs> but like, the thing about Nikki Haley is, I'll put it this way. Would you rather be called a slut or a warmonger? It's like, I don't know, it's, 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 it's a good question. Well, because, Nikki Haley's both, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I was gonna see, say, cause this is the problem. I see them as equivalent. Evil. Oh, all right. Well, that's what I was saying. It's like, they're not necessarily, one's not necessarily better than, other, than the other. Like. Some people would rather be a harlot than someone who goes and bombs kids. You know what I mean? I'd rather be a harlot than bomb kids. See, that's, 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 that's the difficult thing. I think both of them want to be both, though. That's the problem. Which is yeah, also true. upsetting. <laughs> that's really, that, that's, that's like a funny bit. Kamala Harris and Nikki Haley arguing with each other in a, a VP debate over who was going to kill more kids. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're going to become one do to you get think the other one. Nikki Haley isn't going to be Trump's VP? Nope. No. Who do you think Trump would pick as a VP? Uh, I, I don't know exactly who, but here's here's my general thoughts. It'll either be a charismatic female, so someone like a Carrie Lake or a Tulsi Gabbard, or a non-charismatic no. male. Trump cannot be on stage with another charismatic male who will steal anything of the spotlight. That's mm-hmm. why he chose Pence to sit in the background. That's why I don't think it'll be Ramaswamy or Tucker Carlson. They'd both be fine choices, but I think they're off the table. Non charismatic, unassuming, like like a Tim Scott male, like Doug Burgum. That's what I if think. If it's if it's female, Trump Trump has no problem <laughs> with a with a fiery female being. It's got to be a lady. Me. I think Christy Nome is a good choice for him. Yes. VP is not about the second best. It's about who gets <clears throat> Trump a demographic he doesn't get. Mm-hmm. Christy, Christy Nome can help him get suburban women. Absolutely. Especially considering what's going on with Joe Biden, economics and schools, you get a middle aged woman with charisma, and Trump is, is it's 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 great. He needs that. Yeah, I so think I think Chris, I think Christy Nome is definitely in the top three or four. I think Tulsi Gabbard's probably up there too. I think you could fantastic. definitely you could definitely do worse. She has really had a redemption arc. Number one and number two, she is very well spoken. Yeah, she, well, she's got a lot of uh, charisma, and she's a former Dem, so she brings potentially some left leaning independents yeah. to say, "Well, yep, yep. you know, Donald Cho, she used to be the Democrat. I'm kind of a soft Democrat, and the maybe an- it could work." Anti war leftists would be like, yep. I. Mm. Don't like Trump, but I think Tulsi in there is good. Absolutely. That's why I was saying uh, in 20, like 2020, that if Trump chose Andrew Yang as an economic advisor and announced that he'd be a cabinet position and Tulsi Gabbard as national security advisor, he'd win in a landslide. Mm-hmm. Of course, the left took that statement and clipped out the part where I said he's going to win in a landslide and oh, cut yeah. out the context of if he legalized marijuana, pardoned all the people in federal prison over marijuana dealing, and then made Tulsi Gabbard. But uh, I, I digress. Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, as someone advising him on national security is exactly what most populists want to hear. Mm-hmm. No wars. There was an amazing article. Uh, I think it was, who was it? Pat Buchanan, the American conservative, whatever, said, it said, fire Bolton, hire Tulsi Gabbard. This is a a, a conservative firebrand right. saying Tulsi Gabbard should be in that position because <laughs> she won't get us involved in these garbage wars. We can all agree. Hey, we don't like her policy on guns or whatever. She's She's evolved on these issues, but she was against nuclear energy and she was for gun control. These are bad things. But she has military service. She opposes foreign intervention and put her in that position. And Trump jumped several Trump's jumping several yeah. points. The, the military service part would be a big thing as well, especially since one of the things Trump is going to have to do if he's reelected is reform the military. Oh, yeah. He, he's yeah. I mean, he's got to de it. You've got to get the recruitment levels up, preferably keep it stateside or in allied countries and not send it over into Iran like Biden apparently plans possibly to do. Uh, if he's going to do that, having a VP who could go directly to the troops, who could go to like the recruitment center and stuff and actually like level with people, I think would be very, very important. Let's uh, let's talk about the story from the Daily Mail. Ron DeSantis demands Ilan Omar is thrown out of Congress and deported wow. following speech declaring she is Somalia first as she faces calls to resign. Yo, this is wild. Did you guys see the speech from Ilan Omar? She's nuts. She's, she's basically literally insane. She's talking to a bunch of Somalis saying our president, my president, my country, things like this, saying that we're going to fight for our country. And people are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like she is. She is speaking like she is not an American citizen. We are going to invade Kenya. Yeah. 
people were talking about how in the past she's been bullhorning saying Somalia, my country, and then corrects herself. So Ron DeSantis, he's got a tweet. He said, expel from Congress, denaturalize and deport. Wow. Uh, I just, I just got to say, this is like, I don't know how you describe it. What Ron DeSantis said is more politically, what's the right word for this? Fiery. Spicy. Yeah. Politically charged. Spicy than what maybe anyone has said in politics. The sitting governor of Florida called for stripping a U.S. citizen of her citizenship and sending her back to the country she claims to have allegiance to. Look, dropping like, out wow. of the race was a great thing for him. He's feeling more <laughs> yeah, confident. He he's feeling fiery. He yeah. yeah, he's like, my political career is over. The, the, expulsion, the, the expulsion definitely needs to happen, though. Yeah. Ilan Omar has done this over and over. She's constantly embarrassing the United States. Ironically enough, the Democratic Party, they're crazy to even have her aboard at this point. And yeah. you know that some of the neoliberals would like to see her gone, but she's a, 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 an ethnic female. She practices Islam. They don't want to touch that with a 50 foot pole. They don't it's, want it's, they, they, they don't want to lose their clout. Their it's not wokeness. it's not just that. It's that Ilhan Omar represents a very Somali district. Mm -hmm. So she has local. She's untouchable. Exactly. Yeah, they're, they're going to keep voting her in. There is potential competition for her from a more uh, conservative perspective. You, If you got someone who is like Muslim uh, Somali, but they were conservative, not progressive, I think they would win. But you'd still have to have someone basically preaching to the group of people that they represent Somalia and not Minnesota. But that's where we're at. So anyway, Ron has, uh, uh, as you said, it was very good for him to drop out of the race. I wonder what would have happened if he said things like this while he was running. Perhaps he should have. I, 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 his support probably would have risen if he had said something like that about Elon Omar. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think that this is sort of more fiery <laughs> than he was because the big accusation was that yeah. he didn't have a personality. Yeah, he was sort right. of a, sort it of turns a out he does. Noodle. He was sort of a limp noodle at times when he was running. I, I think he was trying to like counterbalance himself against like Trump's mean tweets or something like that. And it just didn't work. What could you imagine what Trump supporters would be saying if Ron DeSantis tweeted this? Would they be forced to defend Ilhan Omar? Just to be an opposite to DeSantis? Uh, some, or, uh, 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 some of the uh, real hardcore influencers would have you believe that. I would have laughed my ass off. Oh, yeah, that. no, for sure. I, I feel like I if he had tweeted Max stuff Nordau. like this, it would have left the door open to him having a position in, in the Trump administration. Whereas then mm -hmm. things got too tense. There's too much There's there's too <clears throat> much that's happened now. I, Whereas if he had said stuff like this, they would have felt more aligned. I, I, think, I, I think there's still a possibility DeSantis ends up in the Trump what administration. What do you think he'd do? I I, th I could see him as being uh, in the cabinet, mm -hmm. maybe not as running mate, because again, well, and they can't both no, be from Florida, running. right? He, he's a little bit. I mean, if he's making tweets and and shit like this, then he's too charismatic for Trump to have as a running mate, right? Uh, I got to be honest. I do believe that there's a handful of Trump personalities, Trump supporters, where if Ron tweeted that while running, they would say, "Oh, come on!" I mean, like we're all critical of Ilham, but the idea of stripping someone from their citizenship is fascist. Oh yeah, Ron is a fascist. Now they're yeah. gonna be like based. There, yeah. there would be We've some Trump support. There, there are always gonna be a few hardcore fans right. of cognitive dissonance. Of Absolutely. course. No, yeah, yeah, of course. I, I would have. Ron should have said this. <laughs> I'd have been like, "Yes, Ron." <laughs> R break from your cocoon become who you trump, were meant to be trump you have found your running mate because <laughs> where does he go from here I, I feel like i asked this every other day but you know i feel he's like he's gonna start a podcast on rubble <laughs> he'd make more money he's, he's gonna yeah. join us here on alternative media he really you should try it. to get ron DeSantis aboard well, he, he, he probably his be, campaign probably banned it. banned their staff from appearing but on what the if show? he comes oh, to our regular crazy, tuesday right? event you know it'd be right. funny like could you imagine why that? would they have bad blood with your show this would be uh, like the natural place. Ron, Ron thought, would fit right in They thought Tim was and, too Trumpy. And we are friends <laughs> with some of the, like, uh, like Will Chamberlain worked for him and, and Will's a friend, a good friend and he's been on the show several times. Huh. Uh, but there were uh, attempts that had been made. We can't reach out to their people and they were just like, they kept saying no. And then we got word that basically the DeSantis campaign said, do not go on Timcast IRL, which is the weirdest thing. I think- They would have gotten more votes if they had. They would have. <laughs> and I think what happens is they were getting advice from, you know, like the Ken Griffin types, these establishment rhino, you know, stodgy uniparty guys. Lindsey Graham gave him a call. Yeah. And they're like, go on CNN, go on cable TV. The podcasts aren't real. And then look at Vivek Ramaswamy. Vivek saw what, what I, I, Vivek was probably sitting there and he was like, Ron's doing everything wrong. I'm going to do what he should do. and It's going to work. And it did. He was never going to be president. I told Vivek this and 
you know, we had him on the Culture War show earlier uh, last year. And I said to him, I'm a fan of Vivek. He's a great guy. I said, I don't think you're going to win. I would like to vote for you in the primary, but I think Trump's going to win anyway. And he's like, well, you know, look, I'm running. We'll see, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, come on. Uh, a first timer, young guy with no political background at 0% is, is, is very, 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 very unlikely to win a GOP nomination, especially with Trump running as an effective incumbent. Mm-hmm. I think anybody who thought they were anyone else is going to beat Trump in this is, is delusional, except when Vivek said they are going to stop at nothing to remove Trump. In which case, I should stay in this as long as I can. The crazy thing is, dude spent like thirty million dollars of his own money. What was the number? Was it thirty million? I know he so. sold. I think thir- it was more than that, actually. Yep, of his own money, trying to maintain this. I respect it. And then what did he do once Iowa came up bad? He he bowed out and endorsed Trump right away. Masterfully played. Ron could have done all of that, and Ron didn't. But yeah. I just wa- I just want to say this: How hilarious would it be if after the election, Ron DeSantis is termed out? He's he's done. He doesn't run. He just comes out and he's like, I'd like to thank the people of Florida, the good people who supported me as I was your governor. Uh, I now want to say go to rumble.com slash Ron DeSantis to watch my new show where I talk about stripping immigrants of their citizenship and deporting them back to their home countries. We're going to build the wall. And then just goes totally off. And he makes this like, you know, griper rumble channel. And he's just like super, (laughs) you know, we're going to build the borders for funding gone. I've always wondered why people, when when they get like so much money and and so much clout, that clearly you know they've got a continuing career, they'll always be able to pay their bills. But none of them ever like go crazy and start doing like crazy stuff and saying crazy things, or on, only very rarely. And it's actually a mystery because you could get even more attention doing that, and it's like you could corner the market. This it- is this is listen listen. This is why I want everyone to go to factsrap.com, f a c t s r a p dot com, and buy. Tom McDonald and Ben Shapiro's song. I really do mean it. Um, like, you know, talking to these guys, seeing where they're at, it's looking uh, where, where they're at. It's looking really, really good. But there's a reason why I want Ben Shapiro to hit the Billboard Hot 100. It's like you're saying. People don't do crazy things. It's all stodgy, routine and boring. Nothing is shocking the system. Nothing is waking people up. We got to get a little weird with it. Like Frank Reynolds in It's Always Sunny. He's old. I mean, it, it, for those of you that have seen the show. He's an old guy, he's super rich, and he decides to live in squalor with these like degenerate bar owners because he's like, I want to get, I, I only got a few years left of my life. I want to get freaky with it and just do weird stuff. I'm not saying to literally, you know, have everyone be degenerates, but one thing I've often said is you got a lot of powerful, influential people on our side who believe in freedom, liberty, meritocracy, responsibility. They're not spending their money doing anything. They'll go on their shows and they'll say stuff like, it's so bad that I see Joe Biden doing this. Man, we got to get out there and vote. Good thing. I'm glad they're doing it. And then they'll be like, so make sure you go to my website, you know, cornstarch.com and buy the cornstarch. And I'm like, it's fine. Sponsorship supports the show. But outside of being a firebrand and a preacher for good issues, what are people doing to actually invade? To, to, to like, we're not going to win a culture war by standing on a hilltop screaming. You have to actually try and seize territory in culture and, and physical reality. So, I, I just I get frustrated when I see prominent individuals who become extremely successful in news media podcasting and then they just sit down in their chair and they do nothing. They're like, I'm good. I, I, I've seen people stable off. They're like, well, I may I make I'm making good money right now. I'm going to do nothing else. and I'm going to and I'm going to work a couple hours a day and then I'm going to go sit on the beach all day. And I'm like, man, it's like once they got comfortable and they got money, they said, I don't want to move from this position. I, I want to see people. With these big shows being like, I'm going to work 20 hour days, 16 hour days, and we're going to win this culture war. We need more of that. If yeah. Ben Shapiro and Tommy Channel get to the Hot 100, do you think they'll release a remix featuring Ron DeSantis? No. I think that would be the funniest I, I, thing. I, I do want to say this. In in essence, we've already won that cultural battle. And it's one that, you know, Carter and I have been fighting for for, for over a year now. Because it's not just about politics. It's about how the industry keeps out anyone who's not a part of the club, just in Mm. general. So they change the metrics. They say, oh, we don't count this anymore. We don't count that. Because they don't like the fact that independent individuals can build something to challenge the establishment, the woke establishment, and their narrative control, and take over. It's going to be real funny. I mean, it already is funny that Ben Shapiro is the number one rapper in the world on iTunes. (laughs) But it's going to be real funny when he's not. He he, he, He doesn't. He just I, talks fast, it so he did a song. Good, though. Yeah. It's, it's, this year is already off the hook. <laughs> yeah. We're only in January. 
but but the, again this is why you know for one tom mcdonald has been putting out a bunch of really amazing stuff for a long time challenging the culture and it's funny what they say they're like here's a guy who looks like a drug dealing gangbanger <laughs> and he's rapping against this stuff and i'm like duh that's the point that, that, that you don't, you you do, you do not have to combine the style, the looks, the aesthetic with being a criminal. You can be a good person and try and look a certain way and have fashion. So every time he's been getting big, he, he's been getting big hits forever. They block him out. They lie. They create reasons as to why he shouldn't chart, why he doesn't deserve to get written up about. And this guy, Tom McDonald, has got numerous songs, just all of them hitting like 10, 20 million or not all of them, but a lot of them. And you get people in the industry now acting like they don't know who he is. The reality is they know who he is. They do not want any of us to be able to supplant their machine. But I want to let everyone know the good news. The digital media industry is in free fall. Absol tech crunch just laid a bunch of people off. By this time next year, it's going to be nothing left but us. So we are winning and I'm glad to see it. And what I'm hoping for now is with things like Public Square, we're now seeing the expansion of of these, uh, these public square-esque companies, companies that believe in American values, sponsoring more and more people in various industries. It's about time these big companies that are on public square find some musicians to sponsor, find some athletes to sponsor, find some drivers to sponsor. I saw a pro athlete at uh, uh, Nitro Circus wearing a public square shirt. Nitro Circus has people on BMXs and rollerblades and skateboards doing backflips and scooters. That means you've got little kids hanging out in the audience and they see a, they see a big public square banner. Travis Pastrana, I think he might be on Black Rifle. That's us winning and dominating. We have to build things. So it's silly, I guess, to be like Ben Shapiro is the number one rapper. We need more than that. More than coffee companies. Every podcast in the world selling coffee nowadays. But what we're doing, we've got a physical location being built right now for our coffee shop. The club will probably be, probably be open in a few months, so much sooner than the actual coffee shop. We're going to be doing the live show on March 5th at the Casper Club in Martinsburg, West Virginia. So the goal here is to build physical locations where people can meet up. And then you don't need me to sit here in front of a camera and tell you what to think. You guys can go talk to each other. Long story short, people who are successful in this space need to build things and work 10 times harder than they are. Yeah, there are a lot of people that sort of sit on their laurels. I mean, look at uh, even, and this might not be an example you'd even uh, agree with, look at Howard Stern, for example. The man spends the better part of two decades fighting against censorship. I mean, out of self-interest. It wasn't out of any major ideological principles. Then once he gets his break, he's got the contract signed. He's got all the money in the world. Well, bye. He just uh, he just uh, goes off and starts becoming boring. Exactly. And Artie gets fired, although he was on heroin. So that sort of. I mean, look sense. at look at uh, uh, Jimmy Kimmel, <laughs> the oh, Man yeah. Show. Mm -hmm. having women yeah, jump on trampolines there are a million memes about his his hypocrisy yep too many people are grifters and the funny thing is the left likes to call people uh anti-establishment people anti-establishment people grifters as if it's easier to be anti-establishment as opposed to being protected by the censorship machine we were talking to steve baker yesterday a journalist who's being criminally or they're trying to criminally charge over january 6 he said there were three journalists who were together and went to the Capitol and filmed things. One of the guys worked for a local news outlet with a big local news outlet camera, and he filmed a bunch of stuff. The other guy filmed on his phone. The guy filmed on his phone released a report for the New Yorker calling them insurrectionists. Mm -hmm. No charges. Or I think, uh, yeah, what happened? He, he didn't get charged at all. Right? I don't th or he got very light sentence, if anything. I think he got nothing, he said. I think yeah. he didn't get charged. I think they were just like, oh, you're good. And then the guy with the big news camera got, what did he get, eight months? Yeah. And he, he comes home to his news station saying, like, I got all this footage. And like, great. Then they cut him off and stopped talking to him. And then they raided his house and arrested him. Despite the fact he is a credentialed member of the press with a press camera with journalists filming. That's that mm -hmm. that's the game. So for all these people like Howard Stern, they know who butters their bread. They are weak, pathetic individuals. And that's all that's all they've got is I will do whatever you say. They're they're you know, they're they're Anakin Skywalker getting all this great power and then dropping to their knees for the emperor and saying, I will do whatever you say. I don't want to lose what I got. Cowards. No. I mean, I think that's why you were saying before, 
some of these people who come off campaigns, why don't they do something bolder? And I always think it's because ultimately they want back into the machine. They aren't sure if if things are over. And that might shift now. I mean, you guys would be better able to gauge us than I would given both of your careers. But because alternative forms of content and media have really become dominant, they've, they're, they're not just something some people are doing. They're actual viable careers. Maybe we'll see a difference now. But I think that risk of not only am I going to lose potential income sources, but also I'm going to lose my position where I have influence scares people from doing anything bold. Yeah. Well, the other thing is if you create an infrastructure in which like non-woke individuals who don't have a problem with edgy content or or something dissident, something that goes against the grain, if they engage in business making and so forth and then reinvest in other people too, you can create sort of a lexicon of income of support in which you don't have to have that sort of self-censorship anymore because you've got sort of the platforms, etc. Uh, you know, you've got like new tech, you've got like Rumble, BitChute, etc. Uh, you've got people who are capable of investing and they would expect a return on investment. And then you have people who give them that return and it's sort of just a reciprocal process. Yeah. Let's, uh, this is a fun one, this next story. From SCNR.com. There is a member of Congress who, as it turns out, is a 9-11 truther. And he's a Democrat. <laughs> and he's a Democrat who illegally pulled a fire alarm. It's Rep Bowman. Bowman responds to resurfaced 9-11 truther blog. I regret posting any, any, anything about any of these people. Yo, this is for real. New York rep Jamal Bowman issued a statement to the Daily Beast after the outlet reported that Bowman promoted wild conspiracy theories on his personal blog in a Monday report. According to the outlet, Bowman's blog was operated during the same time as a middle school principal at the Cornerstone Academy for Social Action in the Bronx as far back as 2014. <laughs> <laughs> Around February 2016, the blog was scrubbed of all posts, which ranged from poetry to essays, to topics ranging from the Florida recount to the Y2K bug that stoked fear, the century, blah, 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 uh, the turn of the century, and speculation that 9-11 September attacks were an inside job by the U.S. government. The notion, of build, the notion of Building 7's collapse being a controlled demolition, which was a large component of the inside job theory, has been denied by, by NIST. We, most of us know this. Quote, 2001... Planes used as missiles targets Twin Towers reads a stanza and an archived poem by the New York representative per the Daily Beast. Later in the day, Building 7 also collapsed. Hmm. Multiple explosions heard before and during the collapse. Hmm. Allegedly, two other planes, the Pentagon, Pennsylvania, hijacked by terrorists. Minimal damage done. Minimal debris found. Hmm. The poem continues. <laughs> we blamed Obama. Oh, we blamed Osama. Sorry. Went to war in Iraq, captured Saddam Hussein, killed him. Bin Laden in Af is, Afg is Afghan, so we went to war there, too. In the poem, Bowman credits a 2005 documentary, Loose Change, and the 2007 documentary series Zeitgeist, which explore theories behind the terror attacks that counter official narratives. Okay. He says, I don't believe anything these cranks have said, and my life's work has proven that, blah, blah, blah. Nah. I'm sorry, I gotta tell you. I don't know a single person who has written about 9-11 Truth seeing loose change 9-11 and zeitgeist and has changed their mind yeah i i don't know a single person he, he changed his mind once he got exposed while being in congress that's that's <laughs> this exactly is why right. we archive everything because we don't know who's going to run for office and it's good to have the receipts but then what if the conspiracy theory is that bowman's actually secretly based and trying to uncover deep conspiracies within the government Oh God, I remember zeitgeist <laughs> and then they had that yeah. section tacked onto it with like mithra and stuff like that yeah the religion section. Yeah, I, th and all. I think uh, Good documentary is fun. I, I, I got to go with Occam's razor on this one. Bowman is a grifter. He was lying then because it earned him Internet points and he thought he would get recognition. He would get traffic or whatever. how old is how old would he have been when he first would he have been, he would have been fairly young, I think. No, this is 2014, it said. But mm -hmm. he's not so old now, is he? <laughs> this is 2014. He's posting this stuff. <laughs> yeah, but how old was he then? I, I guess I up. guess. Yo, it's kind of wild to think that was 10 years ago. So mm -hmm. right now exactly. he's. 47. 40? Yeah, so, so he, was, he, he so he's reasonably young. 37. Bad poetry. Yeah, no. 37. Not. Hey, well, I'm I 36. Mean, Don't call me old, Tim. No, what I'm saying <laughs> is you're an adult. You have a worldview. You have a perspective. Yeah. You don't just change your mind. Like, what happened in Bowman's mind where he was like, at one point saying, what caused Building 7 to collapse? It was never hit, hit, hit by a plane. Then 10 years later to be like, oh, don't he was like, totally, man, I'm, totally I'm going to have so many Facebook followers after this. <laughs> well, he thought about it enough to write like 
to make art about it. And the poetry doesn't yeah, even it make It was on his mind. Right. Is, is there anywhere where I can see this full poem? Because I would it like doesn't, to see it, It too. does not appear to rhyme. No, the hmms is his best rhyming word. Maybe it was like spoken word. <laughs> Maybe he was preparing to perform <laughs> it somewhere. It, the, the, real, the real story. Uh, he, he invented slam poetry. Right. <laughs> There's like an alternative <laughs> reality where Jamal Bowman has its own blog and its own successful like Rumble channel and he's talking about 9-11 truth stuff. Slam, slam poetry was invented by a dude obsessed with zeitgeist. <laughs> You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. He was 35 at the time. That's what Daily B says. He was 35 at the time, and he maintained an online journal, relentless-strongback.blogspot.com. <laughs> it gets better and better. I'm sorry. I did not see this one on my 2024 bingo card that he's actually a 9-11 Why did he change his mind recently? He never did. He's just lying right ah, now. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's he no was way. lying before or now or possibly both, both. Yeah. which means he's a good politician and a good Democrat. Yeah, there's no way that he, he would. It's go, like tomorrow a new poem comes out. He, like I was just kidding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's not going to get punished for this, by the way. No, no we he, all we all know this. I mean, he, he can literally pull a fire alarm to try to uh, prevent a vote from taking <laughs> place, and nothing happens. That's crazy. <laughs> hey, look, we got his blog here because we went to the Wayback oh, Machine. And uh, let's see, we got uh, December eighteenth, twenty fourteen. Poor Bowman. <laughs> Look, man, I don't care if you believe in crazy conspiracies. I don't believe if you I don't care if you believe in sane conspiracies. Just give me your logic. I'll argue with you if I disagree. But what I don't respect is Bowman clearly believing these things and then acting like he doesn't. Yeah. But that explains him being a politician, I guess. He should become our nation's poet laureate. I don't understand what's happening. He should be the next White House press secretary. <laughs> <laughs> but only speak in poems. Yes. That's sort of rhyme, but also maybe not. Okay, hold on. I propose we forgive Bowman for pulling that fire alarm. No jail time expunged from his record if he comes out and admits he does believe 9-11 was an inside job. And he performs his poem on the floor yes. of Congress. <laughs> That'll be no, the he only performs his poem way. here. That's true. <laughs> Okay, I don't think this is loading. I think it's Jamal not. Bowman's people are scrubbing it as fast check, as they check, possibly check can. No, this is this is archive.org. It might be on archive.today as well. Archive.org is known to scrub things for political reasons. Really? Yeah. Archive.today. Oh, archive yeah, today. they're not it, as reliable. It, it's it's not as reliable. It may or may no, not. No, I, I, I tried archive today. Yeah. I, I use it all the time, although for some reason I can't get it to load on the laptop I'm using in the uh, hotel. The hotel is like that's a risky website. Don't go there. Yeah, no, it just never loads. All right, we got something. Love the world. <laughs> oh, here we go. It's loading. Bowman's Mick loving think, it. Nah, it's gonna. It's giving us this 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 business business again. Yeah. Okay, he performs the poem, and then Trash House signs him as an artist, and well, he starts rapping the poem. <laughs> A May 2011 poem called "Recapitulate," in which he talks about 9/11 trutherism, planes used as missiles. Yeah. It's not just one. He was he, needs, he was thinking about it. He needs to do a rap with Ben Shapiro. Yeah. Dude, come on. You mean like yes, that would yes, be dude, the yes, best yes. crossover ever. It would explode the internet and destroy it forever. That'd be great. Especially if it was about 9-11 truth. Do you know anybody who watched Loose Change or Zeitgeist? Was a fan of the film in some capacity and today has been like, no, I, I think it's all wrong. I've never seen Loose Change, although I did watch Zeitgeist back in the day, back, you know, when it was first released. And I thought it was fun. I thought it was entertaining. And I was like, uh, you know, I'll keep an open mind or something. But I was never really a truther. Dude, right I now. wonder I wonder if this is retaliation for the fire alarm thing. Because this is, this is character assassination, what they're doing to this guy. Look what they wrote. Both Zeitgeist and Loose Change were favorites of mass shooter Jared Loeffner, who oh. killed six people and injured 13 more, including then Gabby Giffords in a rampage in Tucson, Arizona in January 2011. The only reason you include that which is like a nonsense statement. Zeitgeist and Loose Change were seen by millions of people. The only reason you would include that is because you are trying to character assassinate Bowman. They must be like, you are being punished for doing this. Maybe he's like Eric Adams getting raided by the FBI about two friggin' weeks after he criticizes Biden's border yeah. policy. Maybe it's the but same thing. Maybe, maybe they thought that he was going to criticize the admin, the regime. I don't know. I can't see what website we're on right now, but Daily Beast is the one who <clears throat> broke the article, which I would assume they... Oh, it's like they would they would be like, good job with that fire alarm. That was a, that was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, maybe. But some Bowman did something because Daily Beast is basically like deep state media. Yeah, that's why I, I'm surprised that they're going after him. So he I, must there, have must, done there must be a reason. There's got to be some. Scene. And it obviously like, is not the fire. I mean, the fire alarm they could care less about. They were happy. To yeah, yeah. Him. Bowman went to Pelosi and was like, I don't know if I can do this anymore, man. Trump's just not that bad a guy. And they're like, he's cracking. <laughs> you we promised, gotta, we gotta shut him down. You promised me you'd tell me the truth about 9-11 if I just ran. <laughs> no, how about, 
he he finally uh, completed his mission, breaking into the archives and found all the records. And the only reason he ever ran was to try and get access to private information. And they found him out. There's got, there's got to be something weird going on. Because the Daily Beast especially would not criticize, even, well, basically any Democrat for such a thing. They would hide it. They would cover it up. Look or at this. justify it. They'd be yeah. like, Yo, it, yeah. it was, oh, it. well, it's, it's a youthful indiscretion. This is crazy. They said there can be no mistaking that these are the subjects of Bowman's poem. He refers to Zeitgeist director Peter Joseph by name. Shout out to John Perkins, William Cooper, Michael Moore, Peter Joseph, and Adam Curtis, he wrote. John Perkins is the author of the book Secrets of an Economic Hitman. And William Cooper was a radio host and hero of the militia movement and of Oklahoma City bomber Timothy McVeigh, known for fevered ramblings about aliens, the Illuminati, and the supposed man-made origin of HIV and AIDS. Cooper died in a shootout with law enforcement in November 2001. <laughs> Michael Moore and Adam Curris are both left-wing documentary makers. Why are, why are they smearing Bowman in this way? Bringing up the most extreme individuals ever. It's like, it's like saying Bowman was seen on video drinking water. Hitler also drank water. That's what they're doing. Maybe maybe after the uh, fire alarm incident, maybe he's political dead weight and they're worried about yep. that. So they're they, just trying to force him out. I, I was thinking similar. Who wants his seat? Who do they want to mm -hmm. put in his position? Yes, to coordinate someone else for it. I, I think, out. I mean, they, the election, he's being he's up for re-election uh, in November. This is, they just dumped acid on his campaign. Daily Beast said, you're out. So something must have happened where they went to him the, look, political individuals don't play games like this unless they have no choice. The first move by any anyone in any kind of business is going to be, can we convince someone to do what we want them to do easily? You know, when you before going to war, you try and get your, your you know, the, the rival country to do what you want them to do peacefully because it saves money, time and energy. And you don't, you know, save, save money. I have to imagine someone went to Bowman and said, we don't want you to run. We want you to retire. And he was like, no, I won't do it. And they were like, do not run against us. And he was like, I'm running and I'm going to win. And this is what happens. Well, it's sort of like what happened with Kerry Lake there with the uh, the That's head right. of the head of the Arizona GOP openly telling her, hey, uh, there's a bunch of people that don't want you to run for office. Wouldn't put it past the Democrats. I mean, they're just as shady. And there are other oh, yeah. Democrats who are, ch I'm just looking it up right now. There are Democrats who have already announced to challenge him for the primary. So wow. they're... He's so, not so beloved. one of one of them is one of them is uh, in on the joke presumptively. One but of them know, was a huge fan of his poetry back in the day. It, it, <laughs> it could be simply that opposition research found this and then gave it to the Daily Beast and said, "Have fun." It's totally possible. But so. why would they even run with it unless they had a problem with Bowman because he's a right. Democrat? Yep, that's the point. That's crazy. <laughs> this this story gets crazy it's also at first. Great. <laughs> at first, I'm like, this is just a funny story about how Bowman's a 9/11 truther, and now it's just like there's another conspiracy that we've uncovered, and the media is going to write crazy right-wing conspiracy theory that Bowman, blah, 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 is being sidelined or whatever. Yes. Dude, there's no reason for anyone to go after him politically like this. If they just said we found his blog and it's kind of weird, but he said he apologized for it and moved on, I'd be like, oh. But to lump in like mass shooters and and terrorists mm -hmm. and name drop them in the article with him, that's crazy. crazy claims. And I, I found his blog and I'm like, read the Where did poem. you find it? I'll send you the link, but I, there's no guarantee because it gave me the same gear for its... um. There are a lot of people trying to access it right well, now. Well, maybe. Maybe yeah. that's the... I Probably. But yeah, the one... I can't even say what he said in the one below recapitulate, but there's a couple. What's the subject? Can you say what the subject matter is? How he was conceived. <laughs> <laughs> this blog well, okay. is wild. We'll save that one for the members portion of the show. I, wow. I'm going to need this link as well. Yeah. No. <laughs> Immediately stand. Oh my God. We all must know. I don't oh, know. Man. I don't think I want to know. No, but like we have wait, to. It, it this gave is our you, duty. It, it gave you the gear symbols for like a while. Yeah, but now I've got the whole thing at my disposal. Oh, really? I have it. Too. I have it now too. Do you? You just, just gotta hang there. What for year a did you pick? Um, I actually just Googled read. Like I, they linked the article in yeah, one but of it's, the press it's releases. Scrubbed. Well, this went to a, an archived one, so I don't know. This he did this October twenty fourth of. Gee. I don't know if I can find the year, but yeah, just recapitulate is the name of it. He was he he was committed to this blog. Are you seeing it too? Because I sent it to Hannah Claire in Slack just to see if it would I work. I can see but... recapitulate. Yeah. Is the inappropriate word rhymed with it, or is it just basically slam poetry? <laughs> what am I reading? Right to now? give me a hint. I, I did uh, I did the control find for the the hmm to make sure it was the right poem. And can you just three can you just post there. it in like I could try it? Yeah. Just send it to me. Yeah. <laughs> 
See if we can get this thing up. Take what a look time? at what this guy was talking can about. Can you imagine his staff right now? His communications person was like, is there anything else? And he's like, I can't say. Who Who is to say? <laughs> or maybe they all know. Maybe he's constantly writing poetry in the office. This is how he like delivers memos to he's, people. He's got a pseudonym on Reddit, maybe. Or something. <laughs> Because that's a good question, though. Is yeah, there the, another? Like, if he abandoned this I one, what look. what else is there? Dude, I bet he's got a Reddit. Yeah. He's got a Reddit account, an old one that he's he abandoned. He's a frequent a shit poster on 4chan as well. I would. I mean, 4chan's hard to track, but you can find his account on Reddit and figure out what he was posting. Yeah. I bet he's got wild stuff in there. We, sh we shouldn't, it, it shouldn't be so crazy a world that we're actually sitting here seriously speculating about that, too. <laughs> what I'm really, what I'm, what I'm really interested in is, what did he do to get the machine to come after him like this? Probably uh, it's just the fact that the, he had the fire alarm incident and stuff and they thought maybe he'd lose. Yeah. They probably just said, yep. oh, well, we're not 100% sure and, you know, we're going to be kind of close in the House and the Senate anyway come the next election. So, you know, get lost. Yeah, but he'd, he'd have to have resisted. They go to him and say, you're not going to win re-election because of what you did. And he's, and he's saying like, Nah, I can do it. And they're like, you're going to get roasted in the primary. Get out. They probably did it the soft way first, like saying, look, you know, here's the internal polls. And, you know, we think that it's best that you just, you know, seek a different office, uh, run for mayor or something like that. And he, went, and he probably hmm. said no. And then they said, OK, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they, they'd say, you here's know what happens next. You, they, they, they may not have even threatened him. They might have blindsided him. That's true. That's always possible. But I have to imagine Take like. unawares. If he did something wrong and the political machine said, it's time for you to bow out, and he said no, they need only say, you wrote the blog, you know exactly what we're capable of. Yeah. And then he can be like, okay. <laughs> I get, I mean, would it, would it be, wouldn't it be funny if like Jamal Bowman was like, you can't scare me. Your, your deep state conspiracies won't stop me. I'm going to run and do the right thing. And, <laughs> but like no one cares because he's kind of a bad guy. Yeah. I, I think what's what's his constituency like? Like uh, the uh, specific district D plus that he thirty. Okay, I mean so I'm then, imagining. So then you'd think that it would be reasonable. He's in to say. um he's in Westchester County, New York, right? And so that's fairly wealthy from what I know about it. Um, I'll look up the demo. I'll look up specifics. Let's uh we got to talk about this story from the Daily Caller. Let's jump <laughs> to this one while we uh, look up more on uh, uh, Bowman. But, uh, from the Daily Caller. Bud Light hires conservative-friendly comedian Shane Gillis in face-saving move. In a wild face-saving move, Bud Light is partnering with popular comedian and original cancellation survivor Shane Gillis for an unlikely brand deal. Both sides announced on Instagram. Gillis, who, who Saturday Night Live fired, uh, hired and then fired shortly after woke folks discovered jokes he made on his podcast, announced a deal on Instagram. Excited to announce partnership with Bud Light, Gillis wrote. The deal comes not long after an appearance on the Joe Rogan Experience where Gillis and Rogan, Rogan bandy about whether or not Bud Light can rehabilitate its image in the wake of the Dylan Mulvaney disaster. It became a joke, Gillis told Rogan. That's tough to overcome marketing wise. It's tough to get people to order a Bud Light publicly. You're going to get made fun of. So uh, Shane Gillis is a funny guy. He's uh, not a woke guy. No, I don't think he can save Bud Light. I <laughs> I, don't know I, I mean, I, I don't blame him, I guess, for taking the money. But I still don't see how regular people will be anything but embarrassed ordering Bud Light. I mean, it was already embarrassing to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, well, yeah. I'd say it barely gets you drunk, yeah. It wasn't that but, good. Uh, well, I mean, it's a light beer, so, you know, what's the point? Basically, uh, you just keep it as survival uh, survival food uh, in lieu of water. Or if you're Shane you drink like 36 of them. You know, <laughs> a little bit of a different situation. I think that's one of the only reasons you accept it, too, is because you had like a past drinking them. And I don't know. You'll, you'll get slightly tipsy after 36 of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but uh, uh, here's the thing, though. The parent company uh, owns a lot more than just Budweiser and Bud Light and stuff that like that. Yeah, so true. they don't really care. I mean, they lose a little bit of money, but then they can also sort of cater it to the woke people so that you have your specific like LGBTQ plus MAP woke DEI beer. And then all your other brands, like nobody even realizes the same company as the parent company necessarily because right. people yeah. don't even look into that sort of thing 99% of the time. Yeah. So they're still mm -hmm. making money. That, I, I think that's fine. You know, I'm not a big fan of the hyper uh, consolidation of massive corporations. So Bud Light's on the verge of death. This is, this is, this is the, the, just pure desperation. There is a potentially going to be a strike. Uh, Bud Light bottling plant workers say they want to make more money. Bud Light can't pay them more money. Anheuser-Busch can't pay. Their sales are down something like $30 billion. How are they going to pay more? Do you guys see that story? People are posting. It's a meme where it's like, 
UPS drivers demand better pay, win. And the next one is 12,000 UPS drivers laid off, you know, over like, <laughs> and it's just like, what did you think was going to happen? The money's got to come from somewhere. These people don't get it. Like you work for a company, you say, hey, there's 100 employees. We all deserve to make instead of, you know, 10 bucks an hour, 15. They go, okay, fire a third of the staff. And then the money from them goes to you. Yeah. Shane Gillis is being brought on in an act of absolute desperation. If this strike happens, it could be, it could be the, the end of Bud Light. Because all of a sudden, there's going to be a massive shortage of a beer already nobody wants. Mm -hmm. Or it could be normalizing the market. Nobody wanted to buy it in the first place. But it could be cascade failure. Not enough beer is made. They struggle to sell it as it is. What little product they, they make doesn't sell. They don't make back enough money to make more. And they can produce less and less and less as more and more people quit because they can't get paid to do the job. And then Bud Light's gone by June. It's part of their master uh, plan. They're going to rebrand as a microbrewery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, artificially limit the supply, double the price. You know, it They're could like, work. It, uh, look, that you should get on their marketing board. They, they should offer you a to job. Like only it's kegs or something. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It also makes me wonder who... Oak aged. <laughs> who else did they approach <laughs> right. for this position? Like, not maybe he was their first choice, nothing against him, but were there other, you know, spicy conservative comedians question. who were like, no, were I like, won't hmm. touch it. They are like, huh, Don Jr. is not much of a drinker. And <laughs> Ted, you, Ted Jr. didn't quit it in the 80s. So. Would you take a sponsorship from Bud Light Sticks? No. You wouldn't? No. Not for any amount? No. A billion dollars. All the Bud Light mm. you could drink in the world. Well, because <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't drink beer now. The challenge is always anymore. this, right? It's, it's like, I would not sell, sell out to support a bad company doing bad things. The question is, first, is Bud Light the worst offender to where it is like jumping into the pits of hell and working with the devil? The second question, and the answer may be yes. I'm not saying it's not. The next question is, <laughs> if they offer you a substantial amount of money, could that action, which is not the most egregious thing in the world, promoting Bud Light, result in massively more good? If it was something like, you know, one of the cartels wanted you to uh, endorse their human smuggling, I'd be like, yeah, I understand no amount of money is going to get you to do that. <laughs> but Bud Light's just a crappy company that did a bad thing. If they were to pay you like $10 million, you could say, I'll take the gig and give $9 million to insert, you know, nonprofits that are working against you know, uh, yeah, I guess if I could like send like, is it tax free the ten million? We're Let's just say after, after taxes. taxes. Okay, then I give like nine million to gun owners of America. Uh, you and, know, and then make a bigger garden and say okay, <laughs> and then to make a YouTube video saying okay, I disavow the company that gave me the money. Just yeah, backstab like, them. But what if they said like, look, a Shane Gillis said yes. I mean, is anybody going to boycott Shane Gillis? No. No. I then didn't people, even know people, who he was. He's he's a funny guy. He's, a, he's he was on Saturday Night Live. What, what did he do? He made fun of Asians? He was eventually, he, he was ultimately canceled, right? Yeah, yeah he, he, he said something in a, a stand-up bit from way back in the past. Uh, it was an Asian where, accent, Chinese yeah, accent? Yeah, he said something like, a, and I think it was just like a, he generally generally made like an, an Asian uh, mimic, and it was right as he got the job on SNL, some writer went back and found something he did like eight years well, ago in the uh, past. And I have this to and, say. <laughs> Saturday Night Live is racist, and uh, that yeah. writer who complained should be fired. As an Asian yeah. man myself, when I heard Shane Gillis make that joke, it made me feel seen. And then this writer came and said he was racist and removed him from the show. Here I thought, here was a man who could try and represent me. A champion for your voice. And That's they right. just took him out. That's they took horrible. Him away. They took him away because they're racists. Wait until they... all the modern woke people find out about Mad TV back in the day. <laughs> oh, I, <didn't laughs> I was saying Mad TV. Yeah, Alex Borstein. Funny. What was the Mrs. Swan? Mrs. Yes. Swan. Yeah. Oh God, that was great. <laughs> Bobby and she's so still funny. on Family Guy. Yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, I did not think Mad TV was all that funny, but I got to be honest, neither is SNL. So I don't know. Yeah. I would choose Mad TV any day over same. SNL. Fair, I would. Absolutely. Because Stewart was like kind of just the same thing over and over again. But at <laughs> least so when good. you watch it, you went, huh? <laughs> yeah. You know, I was like, yeah. Will Will Sasso was the best. Yeah, and he's they good. Had, uh, Will Bobby Sasso was Elvis. Yeah, they had Bobby oh, Lee. Too. I mean, Alex Borstein's fantastic. She's Lois on Family Guy. Yep. And she was Mrs. Swan, a Chinese woman. Oh, yeah. It's like the most crazy racist stereotype of Asians. Lowered and expectations. Yeah, lowered oh, expectations. Uh, I'm allowed to like what Shane Gillis, uh, his joke, because I am an Asian person, but none of you are. Because you are all white. Except I'm sorry, no. you're oppressing me as the no, patriarchy no. right now? No, uh, 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 you know, Serge is allowed to be, uh, to laugh as well. Because on right. the on the on the on the privilege mm -hmm. hierarchy, he's an African American, so yeah. he's actually closer to the bottom. So, yeah, color, skin color doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm one thing. I'm I'm about out. as Native American as as Elizabeth Warren, or a little bit more. Does that, that count? Yes. Okay. All okay, right. Excellent. All right. So Carter, I've you're got doing my N word. I have Canadian <laughs> I've got my N word and uh, something from 
the North. That, that's that communist. Country. That's worse. <laughs> well, Give it up, place. sir. <laughs> We're not going to be able to laugh at this I, joke. I, I don't nothing. know what to tell you. Canadians, yeah, only Canadian, so anyway. foreigner, so that's you, you, you oh. get a half a point for that. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I'm a foreigner. So I'm a child of immigrants. I'm and not, you're a woman. And I'm Canadian yeah. and British, which you know. See, we're everyone at this that. table has a, a lot of uh, a that's lot right. of privilege points. And, 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 and we also know that according to the woke, women have no agency either. So even if Anna Claire laughed at the joke, it's not her fault. The best part is I have not watched Matt TV or SNL ever consistently. I don't think I've ever seen anything from Matt TV so the whole time you guys were talking I was just nodding like wow so fun great to hear men talk it was uh it, it was it was like SNL it wasn't live though and what it came out around the same time didn't it uh, I don't know I don't know exactly it was it Mad was TV. it was the same uh company that did like the Mad Magazine right. which I think they they stopped making those no 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 they still ago. make them I'm pretty sure yeah they still oh make they them. they returned I'm, I thought they were going under. They had like a, they had like a reissue a while ago. My dad, my dad used to be a fan of them back in the day, and they had a reissue recently that he gave me. It's but just they, were on, they made those yeah. since the 1950s. Yeah, yeah, they've been on like forever. They you got know, they got investigated by Hoover's FBI at one point because they had a board game in there that uh, it was like how to escape the draft or something. I remember reading about this, and you were supposed and and there was a little thing you could clip out to mail in to the FBI, and some people were crazy enough to actually do that. <laughs> <laughs> and so they got investigated. William M. Gaines got called in before the wow. FBI at one point for uh, testimony. Yeah, that's that's wild. Yeah, they they were both in the same time though. To answer the question, like they I think they only started making the show in like the late nineties, late eighties, and then SNL had been around since like the seventies or whatever. But then eventually, Mad TV went kaput at some point. I don't know, but mm. well, so which the, was the, sad. look with uh, yeah, it is sad. with Sean Strickland, you know, doing yep. his funny bit about Bud Light. I'm gonna I'm gonna fix you. I'm gonna rehabilitate you. <laughs> And then, of course, everybody knows he was robbed at uh, UFC, I think it was, was it 297, I believe it was, against uh, Duplessis, where he clearly won the fight, and then they uh, just didn't give it to him. He was robbed. Uh, anyway, the question now becomes, are we at the point where conservatives are like, are you, are you going to cancel Shane Gillis? Like, the people yeah. who are saying Bud Light is out, nobody, nobody should be working with them. Ain't nobody boycotted UFC, and ain't nobody going to boycott Shane Gillis. No. So you've got to make a, a, a decision. Are you are you against Shane Gillis now? I mean, you Which can is, be. I'm not saying you're not allowed to be. I'm, I'm, just I'm saying, not like, for or against him, and I never really drink beer, so I can't be for or against Bud but, Light either. But this is the question. But this is the point. Like, we're upset with what Bud Light did last year. There are people gleefully accepting money from them. If the issue is Bud Light is a dead company that no one should support, these people are happily taking their sponsorship. I mean, UFC did was like a couple hundred million, a hundred million or something. Million? Yeah, definitely. And now Shane Gillis, how much money do you think they paid him? They probably, they're probably paying so him much. a lot of money. And I would take it too. He's like, he used to be like a big Bud Light drinker before all this stuff even happened. So like, that's like a great payday. So it was actually like part of his brand at yeah, one point. Yeah, it definitely was. Yeah, he's like the college prep. I think brand. that's the hard thing. You know, there are people you like, and this is part of Bud Light's strategy, right? They, they want to make it so you will say, well, I like this person, so I'll make an exception to the point where it gets mm -hmm. memory hold and forgotten. Um, Attempt rehab. I, I think the ultimate people who pay the price are their workers, which is what we said in the beginning that who, you know, the company, the executive suite who makes these marketing decisions, maybe some of them got fired or like suspended or whatever. They got moved to the background for a little bit, separated from the company, company temporarily. But ultimately, when they have to answer to their shareholders, when they don't have revenue, it's the people who actually bottle or package the material who pay the price. We are going to go to Super Chats and take your questions. So if you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends, and more importantly, if you want to hang out in the members-only uncensored show, we're going to say un uh, not-so-family-friendly things. We'll put it that way. Go to TimCast.com, click Join Us, sign up. If you sign up, for at least 25 bucks a month right now, you can submit questions and potentially call into the show. We do five callers, four or five every night. So I know a lot of people want to get in and we get as many as we can in. Uh, just for time, it's about how much, how many we can do. If you're a member at 10 bucks for six months, you get a free upgrade or you sign up at 25. The reason we do that is because we have weirdo activists and trolls who try and come in and cause problems. So we had to have some kind of screening process and that's how it works. But uh, we'd love to see you there in the uncensored members only portion coming up at 10 p.m. over at timcast.com. But for now, we will read your super chats. The first super chat from Colatique is Clank. <laughs> Why the spoons? Where does that come from? That comes from me keeping my spoon in my coffee oh, on, and you, on a repeat you... basis. And apparently this is like some sort of Eastern European thing, or at least that's what my mom claimed because she always kept her spoon in the coffee. Right. I've, I've watched your videos where you stir your coffee as you're talking. and Yes. <laughs> 
clank. Clanking is always fun. Did and did they name themselves or did you come up with the name? I didn't come up with the term clankers. Other people did. That's funny. That's 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 organic growth right there. James Bell says Bud Light is sponsoring Shane Gillis. He indeed, we talked about it. I'm curious to what you guys think. The bonus holes, great name by the way, says get them VPNs fired up and help us and sticks dominate the Grifty Awards in our respective categories. Our band is currently number two in the groups groups category. Sticks is rapidly rising in the personas category. Do it for our democracy. We're going for the third year in a row of winning a Grifty. Yeah. When You've are, won three years in a row. Yeah. <laughs> when are yeah, the Grifties one. this year? Uh, I think in March is when when Hotep and the others are doing the Grifties. I have won one of them. I won't be able to appear in person, but apparently I've been nominated already again for the subsequent year. So well, right I'm, on. I, I'm loving it. I'm going to put them on display. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. The bonus hole says, clank, while you have sticks at the beanie compound, don't let him leave until he agrees to go on the culture war with that spoon-stealing leprechaun and Ian to talk about the occult. Also, don't look up our band, the bonus holes. That would be cool, uh, but you're not here this week, right? You're only here short, briefly? Yeah, yeah. Because we do the Friday morning show, the culture war. At some point, it would be cool to talk occult stuff with uh, you, Ian, and Seamus. Seamus is uh, very Catholic. Mm -hmm. Michael Knowles described him as a Shiite Wahhabi Catholic. <laughs> that's how you understand how catholic seamus is yeah i definitely get a bore that'd be fun sometime yeah we'll figure that one out all right we will grab some more super chats raymond g stanley jr says in freedom i stand otherwise known as freedomistan uh well freedomistan means place of freedom that's what uh, it literally means and uh istan means place of or city of whatever hmm. so we went to uh do the new studio inspection the crew is there building the new studio the cool thing is the table here has no console Every, every person at the new studio will have this uh, console, which has got power outlets, internet, cough buttons. We're putting in a, uh, a dump button, which means when someone invariably says something about, you know, committing murder or whatever, we can press a button and it just disappears from the show. And then the show will just kind of blink for, you know, 10 to 15 or even 30 seconds, depending on what's set to. So that's fun. But uh, holy crap, it looks absolutely incredible. It's, yeah, it it's like basically the bathrooms all are there. Yeah. It, it's nuts. I go there, it's a big empty warehouse. I come back, there's wood frames. We come back today, the new studio will be done Friday. Yeah. Done Friday. Doesn't mean we'll be there. Uh the the work kitchen in the in the in the massive building, it's a gigantic 40 foot building. Kitchen's working already. Mm -hmm. Fridge is there. Table's gotta get set up. Skate park is currently under construction. Uh it's not being built there. It's built in, I believe, Texas and then shipped here and then so all the wood is cut, all the bar, all the metal is is, is cut, mm -hmm. all the screws uh, put together, and then they come and assemble it. And then uh, beneath the IRL studio is another studio we're building for a variety of shows. It is going to be absolutely uh, amazing, and we should be in there within like a week or two, nice. which is which is crazy. We'll see. Maybe have to wait. We have to wait because the uh, the construction of the skate park could be too noisy. But uh, I don't know, man. We'll see. It's looking really, really, really amazing. Way better ca quality cameras, better quality lights. Yep. I am very, very excited for Free Damistan. And then uh, we also have another building with uh, Shane Cashman's studio for Tales from the Inverted World Live. Oh, yeah, that's what looking Which back. is, it's like, it's creepy looking. Yeah, yeah. it fits the vibe. Fits 100%. the vibe for sure. Very excited, man, for this for this big move. And then uh, I don't know what's going on with this building. I have, I have no idea what to do. We have 10,000 square feet, a skate park in the basement, a skate park outside. <laughs> And uh, already half the people have, you know, don't work in this building. When we're officially at the new property, I'm like, what do we do with this? Is like turn it into the uh, Tim Cast Museum. I don't know. Have have some display cases and stuff like that. Give tours. It's actually not a bad idea. I don't know if we'd actually be able to monetize that and support the building in that. You know, well, it's like you might you might be, you Beyonce be able has to. a room in her house where she keeps all of her awards. <laughs> it's just your equivalent to Beyonce's <clears throat> room of your accolades. We can. Keep Finally, get all your YouTube plaques. It's together. all left in yeah, have, exact, pristine condition. Have like have like was. a museum with some of the rooms and the skate park, obviously, and then have like a backup studio, like in case anything happens or you Ooh. happen to be in the area, just to keep a backup <clears throat> or something like that. That is a good point. Uh, this studio is not going anywhere. Yeah. We just will be re recording at the other one, but I do think it makes sense to maintain it. So in the event power goes out, internet goes down, we're facing inclement weather, or for some reason we have the we have the option to be here and. Uh, you know, we were talking about actually utilizing both, like Monday through Thursday, we're at Free Domestic, but Fridays we come here or something like that. Mm -hmm. I actually don't think that makes sense because the new space is, is just good. wicked awesome. Or, or, make, or make sort of like a new lineup sort of thing and then have like a retro show specifically here. 
like yeah. with the familiar background and everything else. We could redesign this room too because we want to do. We're, we're planning on doing a morning show with uh, like young to uh, adult female conservatives, mostly moms. Basically, we want to like we've we've had a few of the women who work here or are friends with the people on the show talk about how there's nothing for sane women to watch because they like in, in during daytime. They're taking care of the kids and they're getting, getting the kids ready for school or things like that. The View is like the main show. And they're like, it's insane. It's insane people saying insane things. And so we were like, okay, well, why don't we create that counter programming for like sane women who want to hear like the perspective of other women and moms and stuff like that. So we're looking for, I, 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 maybe we'll, we'll put that here. Oh, we'll figure it out. Anyway, super excited for that. Not to mention the skate park. Oof, it's going to be so amazing. Plus there's a uh, Roosters. We're big fans. We're, gonna, we're building Neo Chicken City. So uh, old Chicken City was in the front of the house and it was very small and had seven, a population oh, yeah. seven. It was bulldozed and destroyed for New Chicken City, which is the one currently outside right now with like 50 residents. And once we move, we're going to be building Neo Chicken City. And I want to give it like a, a Neo Tokyo vibe with like neon lights. <laughs> How amazing would that be? You know, because like, what do you do? 80s chickens. <laughs> yeah, we already have New Chicken City. We can't do New New Chicken City. You know, so we got to do Neo Chicken City. Neo, yeah. Chicken country? No, it's got to be like the future. For the live okay. chicken broadcast, you'll have to have someone do like a new wave theme that gets yeah. looped or something like that. Yeah, we should. If, we if gotta, you're going to do that, go all out. We got Remember that? Do you remember that uh, Roberto Jr. song I wrote? Yes. We'll make a we'll make like a new wave 80s style <laughs> version of that. We can do that. We'll figure it out. All right, let's read some more. Let's go. Here we are. Wasted Bonehead says, good evening from the grave, my fellow clankers. Oh, Marion Holtzman with a massive super chat saying, finally. Yeah. Well, hey, I mean, that was wild. Sticks has an open invitation to come on literally anytime he wants. It's just when he's here, you know. It's a matter of the transit more than anything else. Traveling is difficult for me. Is it because we're, we're, we're based out of? It's, it's more just I'm terrible with schedules. I have travel anxiety, mm. et cetera. I always get insomnia before I fly or go like same anywhere man. beyond Vermont. Same. I have massive travel anxiety. Yep. I'm Are you, you're based in Vermont? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, Rutland. Rut Vegas. Vegas? Rut Vegas is the nickname for Rutland. Oh, wow. We call it that because the main road through, it's just box stores lining it for miles and miles. Oh, wow. And so it's, it's, it's sort of like a, a low rent redneck Las Vegas. Let's let's see what we got here. Zim Memoru says, I like you, Sticks, but I haven't forgot you telling your followers to vote for Biden in the Dem primary to beat Bernie because you thought Biden would be easier for Trump. That was a bad move. I disagree. I, I think that there were shenanigans in the 2020 election. If I look at polls now, then I think that my decision aged like fine wine. Say <laughs> la vie. A single I, 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 regret, I, you know. I'm, I'm not a fan of the the people. What's it? Rush Limbaugh's Operation Chaos, the telling people to go vote in the other people's primary. I'm not a fan mm -hmm. of because they're they're doing the same thing now. Not that it's going to well, work. Some of them are open primaries. I mean, yeah. all's fair in love and war in those ones. But I guess that's true. I guess that's true. I guess it's just sad, and naive to think that it's going to be any other way. Uh, Demoralize says E. J. Carroll is allowed to spend her judgment however she pleases. Why do you care how a traumatized woman chooses to live her life? Do better. Ha, 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 ha. That's very funny. Uh, traumatized. <laughs> that lady. So she falsely accused Trump of raping her. The courts determined that he did not. When she then went on TV and said, yes, he did, Trump tried to file a suit against her. And the same judge said no, because her claim is substantially true. Again, the jury found Trump did not rape her. They held him liable for sexual abuse which is legally distinct. Quite literally, Trump did not force this woman into a room, take her pants down and do what she described as doing. The, the courts, a jury ruled that. Trump can't sue her. Judge wouldn't let it happen. How does that make sense? It doesn't. She lied. She was asked if he did. She said yes, even though the court said he didn't. And then when Trump said, that's defamation, I'm going to sue her. A judge was like, no, you can't. Trump needs to sue in West Virginia. He went in two seconds. The Krasensteins, liberal commentators, have uh, repeatedly said things like, but the judge thought so and the jury agreed and like, oh, come on. Like, you, like it's a fair trial, right? Well, they're being sued for defamation right now. And I tweeted, I hope that they're sued in a conservative district where they get uh, uh, they lose in a summary judgment because then we can say, oh, but the judge said so. They're trying to move venues. <laughs> why? Hey, uh, hey uh, Krasenstein bros, why are you trying to change the venue from Texas to Florida? 
Just go to Texas and see what that that good old conservative judge has to say to you and your opinions. No, they want to do it in Florida. May, may I please take this opportunity to say hi, Ed? <laughs> <laughs> I'm you sure know, I'm sure that he's going to see this too because you know that they scrape the internet for whatever they can with political commentary just right. to find something that they can uh, selectively edit. Well, they're they're uh, upset because I call them evil, and I think they are, and it's because I think they're idiots. I, I I disagree. I think they I think to a certain degree probably you can call them idiots, but I think to that degree we're in various ways we're all ignorant and stupid on, on various things. My issue is their intent. They know. Like, uh, uh, I think it was Ed who called Charlie Kirk racist because Charlie Kirk made a point about how diversity hiring practices result in you questioning a person if they're qualified based on their race. So instead of addressing the philosophic, the philosophy and the morals of the argument, uh, I think it was Ed, he just said, Charlie Kirk is a racist. And I'm like, you knew exactly what Charlie meant. He does not judge people based on race, but a DEI program would make someone do so. And he's like, yes, I knew that. He only posts these things to to, to grift, to yeah. you know. It's like, algorithmic hijacking mostly more right. than anything else. I mean, they I guess they get paid for it or something. Any sane person knows that if a woman comes out and says, 30 years ago, you know, Donald Trump did this to me in the Bergdorf Goodman," and then when asked about it, she can't remember when, she can't explain any of the details, she doesn't even know exactly what year it happened. The dress she allegedly was wearing, according to, I think, the New York Times, didn't even exist at the time, wasn't available. Her story makes absolutely no sense. There's no evidence. Any sane person can realize it's a tainted jury pool in New York going against Donald Trump. And they act like, but it was a jury of his peers. Like, dude, we know you guys are lying. That's why I say they're evil. Yeah. Because, like, basically right now, the culture war is this. It doesn't matter what your politics are. You could be a libertarian. You could be a socialist. Jimmy Dore. But if you say one thing is or is not true, then you're right wing. So they call Jimmy Dore right wing because despite his political opinions, he'll say something like these cases are clearly fabrications from tainted juries. Any any sane person can recognize that. And he's trying to warn like leftoids more often than not. He's like, hey, yeah, you're, you're, you're screwing yourself. You might want to change your tactics. He's trying to uh, get them to actually reevaluate the way they do things, and they just uh, reject him constantly. I find it funny that someone who basically sounds like Bernie Sanders 99% of the time would get labeled right wing. The, Same with Marr. The actually. clapper of cheek says, Tom said the count stops tomorrow morning. Tommy Donald, we got to buy the song tonight. I don't believe that's correct. Tomorrow so, morning, no. No, tomorrow's Wednesday. This, the, the, it's, it's Thursday, uh, uh, 11.59 p.m., yeah. Friday midnight is, the, is, the, is when they stop, right? Mm-hmm. We're 100 on that one. Yeah, um, it stops Thursday at 11:59, and it's weird because I was doing mental gymnastics in my own head trying to make sure that was it. But yeah, I mean, when it's does a week. so when does Every, it start? It's like a it's exactly one week. So yes, yeah, so right. uh, Friday at at Friday midnight, which is you know a.m. Mm -hmm. until right. Thursday 11:59:59, because right. then it becomes Friday again. Right, right. and that's when and, and that's when they track the next week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So from f Friday at you know, 12 a.m. until Thursday, 11.59. They're tracking everything. This means that next week, Tuesday, uh, which is what, one week from today, will be the release of the billboard charts for uh, Tom McDonald and Ben Shapiro. Based on what I already know, I think they're on the Hot 100. But I'm willing to bet that they're going to play games and argue that for this reason or otherwise, they're not going to count some numbers even though it's through iTunes and Spot and, and iTunes and Amazon. It would be interesting to see if they do that because if what you told me before the show is true, there's no way they're not going to be on the I mean you 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 look at how many hits he's got on YouTube and it's like almost right. 10 million. And he was trending uh on YouTube Music. They were number right. 2 at number one two. point. This so, was so it's Nikki, pretty undeniable that they were doing well. Then. Yes. I think right. it's like Megan Thee Stallion or or Nicki Minaj they have a song Megan Thee Stallion. Megan yeah. Thee Stallion. It's like it's got 8 million hits on Spotify. But Tom's got like eight or nine million on YouTube, mm -hmm. which right. YouTube music counts. Yeah. But they're going to argue it's not premium and they're going to try and disqualify the U the music video. They're going to play dirty games. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, they'll do that for sure. And uh, so I just wouldn't even try and use any streams from YouTube. I would just discount them all. And But on sales alone, they should still be on there. Yeah, they always play games with YouTube. 
they they really don't want to count it. Doesn't that make I, YouTube mad? I feel like YouTube wouldn't like to be discounted as like the less than. No, because way. the streams are. If you're a paying member of YouTube Premium, then you're if then you, those ones then count. You, stream, you count. But right. but still, Hannah Claire's point stands. YouTube should be upset that music videos don't don't track properly. Mm-hmm. I think the reality is this. I think the companies they'll they'll track it if you're Vivo. Well, yeah. If you're an ind- independent artist or you're Ben Shapiro, they're gonna go. I mean, look, I, I gotta be honest with you guys. It's gonna be as simple as them going, "Hey guys, uh, yeah, you did hit number one, but this one wasn't labeled properly, so we can't count that. You know, ten million sales that you got. So you're actually not on the list at all. Sorry, guys, that was your fault, and there's no way to track those numbers ever again. Bye." Or they'll do something like spell somebody's name wrong and not correct it. They they yep. did this to us with Trash House Records. They spelled it Trash House, even though I submitted it, you know, everything spelled correctly. It trash spelled house? as two right. separate words as opposed to one. Well, just they didn't have records at the end, mm. but I registered it as Trash and, House and Records. And so then it doesn't track next to the well, other. Well, it did, but it's just a mog. You had to like fight know? with them about it? I didn't bother, but. <laughs> anyway, I do believe we have until the end of Thursday. Uh, but based on I know, based on what I've known so far, I actually think based on there's a wide range of numbers that we're looking at. Because if you go to YouTube, if you go to Spotify and you look at their current numbers, there is a strong possibility if everybody listening right now bought facts by Tom McDonald featuring Ben Shapiro, they could hit number one. I'll say this. If every single person listening right now, we have 50,000, did buy the song, not only would you be helping support Tom McDonald because... He gets that money he can use towards doing more, uh, making more music. I'm pretty sure 50,000 sales would put them uh, uh, like up to like number 40, at least 30 with the numbers they already have. It is entirely possible that with everybody listening here, Tom McDonald's audience and the Daily Wire all pushing Ben, they, they could hit number one. It's 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 an exponential growth curve. It's hard to hit. But uh, based on the research we've done. There was one song that I know of, without mentioning the artist, that reached like number 60 with 60,000 sales. So I was talking to the guys, like we sold about, you know, 50 to 60,000. And then I checked his Hot 100 charts and it was like number 65 or something like that. And I'm like, okay, that gives, gives you a general idea of what you need to reach those, those certain numbers. And also, once you're on the Hot 100, you don't have to hit like, they say, look, I'm looking at Jack Harlow. It's like week, weeks on chart 11. You don't have to stay number one for 11 consecutive weeks. Like... You right. can drop, and then, so if, if Tom McDonald and Ben Shapiro get up there, they'll be on the Hot 100 for quite some time. I think I think it's fair to say, though, this is their week. After oh, this for week, sure. this song's never coming back. But then back. after it that, it's cumulative? It must happen this week, but right. after that, it is cumulative, yeah. That's interesting. Yep. So, uh, I already bought uh, the song. I recommend everybody buy it, and uh, at the very least, it's it's great support for a guy who's worked really, really hard for a long time with a really great message, Tom McDonald. I'm glad that he collabed with Ben Shapiro to boost his message, his profile as well, because uh, Tom should be, he, he should he should be winning these awards. He should be winning Grammys. But they 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 ice people out if you, look, part of the song, the, the, the chorus of facts is how he they make music and they push a message that's not teaching your kids to, to be thugs and your daughters to be hoes. It's literally what he says. Yet you look at Lil Nas X and it's like be a Satanist and, and be gay and things like that. They're not gonna let they're going to try everything in their power to stop like the industry, the music industry, someone like Tom McDonald from rising in the ranks with a positive message of work hard, be responsible Which for yourself. Which is so weird. They like, want, they want they to burn it that? down, man. They, they want to burn it. 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 Well, well, that's what they've done. D- that's what they've done with rap in general. It's like originally and like in the 80s, a lot of the uh, rap music was like, hey, our community is falling apart and we need to, you know, stop smoking crack and stuff like that. And hmm. now it's, hey, uh, I sell crack for a living. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's the whole Ozzy's message. Robot says, good evening, Sticks, Tim, fellow clankers. For those that don't know, I'm saving classic sci-fi and anime culture with my museum, the Bellata Collection, located in Ponte v- uh, Vedra Beach, Florida. Consider visiting and supporting. Tim, reach out. I may advertise. That's all. That's about all. Peace out. <laughs> right on. appreciate it. We'll take a look. Ozzy's I'm, pretty uh, cool, yeah. I'm a big anime, anime fan. I just started watching that. Uh, I think it's a new show, Solo Leveling. You guys don't watch anime? Hmm. Fun show. I do. Good shows. That is, no, it's got four episodes on Crunchyroll. Hmm. Anyway, and uh, all conservatives who rag on uh, anime are completely wrong. Yeah. Michael Malice is completely wrong. There's a reason why the American comic book industry is struggling, why uh, Eric July is succeeding so so massively. We've talked about it with him and why uh, American kids like 
Japanese manga and anime better. The shows that are popular in Japan are way more about perseverance, meritocracy, and giving everything you have to be the best. And then you get these woke movies and shows in America where it's like Ugh. Captain Marvel. She had the power the whole time, but the man was keeping her down. So squishy. It's yeah. just funny to think about it. Even the Pokemon theme song want to be the very best. Yeah, yeah. That's how it used you to be. You can't play that to kids these days. It used oh, no. to be like you have to work hard until your 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 bones break just to, <laughs> to you know, to be the best. You can't just... Yeah. Mm. Or like Goku, you have to train work... every episode and eat like a ton of food every single time. You, you have, have to you have to work hard to enslave these monsters to attack one another. Well, <laughs> well, don't make Pokemon political. You're crazy. I I I was a fan of Pokemon, but at this point I've been out of the loop for so long like I have no clue at this point. I'm like I used to be able to name them all and now it's like I don't even know how many Pokemon I think there they are. Made more. It's more like 500 so, <laughs> a couple my brother or... My brother made this joke where he was like, "Is there a Pokemon game that gets rid of most of the Pokemon but keeps the dogs?" <laughs> so like, like imagine if someone modded pokemon but the only pokemon in it was growlith so it's basically <laughs> oh, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah uh-huh that's that's what i always thought was funny about pokemon it's just like well Vol volpa as a fox foxes are cadence so yeah it's just dog fighting it. yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right here we go let's grab some more super chats dave says clank nuff said well, okay. I, I got to be honest. There's like a thousand dollars in super chats of people saying clank. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of them. <laughs> All right. Do you sell like signature spoons or something? Do people like... I've actually got some here for everyone. No uh, from, way! From, from, from Pumpkin Fire Crafts. Oh, and you had Bill some... Song too, didn't you? Yes, actually. We should grab that before we wrap up and go to yeah. members only. No, here. Bill Song. That's the Wagyu. U.S. Wagyu. It looks good. Yeah. Uh, so did you know that I just eat tons of biltong during the members only show? Is it? No, I actually, I had no clue, but, uh, oh, this, Anton, this South Anton. African guy over here. Yeah. He's, he's eating biltong right now. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and, then, and, then I, and then one day I, I, I was like, I'll try some. I was like, this is good. And he told me it was biltong. It's South African, yeah, you know, dried meat. Yeah. Anton's in Roanoke, land of biltong.com. He is, uh, he can hook you up with the, uh, with the good meat. That's yeah. So funny. I love it. He shipped me all of the uh, bison, Angus. And Wagyu. you said your spoons are locally made too, or made it made? Those are made by Pumpkin Fire Crafts. It's an eBay store. That's cool. And uh, they're engraved, so all of y'all have uh, those and some mugs from Anton's and oh, meats thank and Biltong. You, you came all right. to the show and brought gifts. How fun! Here we go. Ian Slater says, "Beware of Seamus stealing Tarl off the show." <laughs> well, it was funny because everyone's posting spoons, and people post spoons for Seamus. So that's why Hannah Claire was like, "Oh, is it a Seamus thing?" That's why I think it'd be funny if you, but you know, Freedom Tunes, obviously, I'd imagine, right? Mm -hmm, yes, yeah. of course. Too bad Seamus isn't around. He's just this Irish guy who lurks around sometimes. Well, Seamus should be back soon. He's actually, I think in a couple weeks, he'll be back here. Yeah, he says loop. that, then he steals all the spoons and never comes back. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know with, what happened. Uh, with Ian Dunn. In, yeah, in yeah. Right now, right? yeah. It is funny that Seamus makes these <laughs> jokes about himself, and then we all laugh and say, wow, Seamus, you're so funny. And then he goes, you're being racist. They're making <laughs> Irish jokes and he things like that. He sets us up for traps. That's right. Yeah, he does all the time. <laughs> Let's grab some more super chats. All right, Brian says, thank you for the morning video sticks. I'm a longtime viewer. Was just in Vermont for the snow. Grabbed a few MREs. How is Vermont? Is it very blue? Uh, it's very cold at the moment, yeah. Huh. Yeah, no, there's snow everywhere. It actually snowed uh, before we left. Uh, it was uh, pretty messy on the road on the way to the airport. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, uh, like, here, it's, uh, to my uh, standards, this is warm, the weather that I mean, yeah, right the now. window's open. It's 36 yeah, no, that's warm for a Vermont yeah. this time of year. <laughs> we were, I, I was just in, uh, we were in Des Moines, and it was minus 13, I think. Ooh. We yeah. came back here, and I'm this like, wow. Insane. Went to Alaska, it was minus 30, minus 28, and uh, within a few minutes, your facial hair is covered in icicles, because you're breathing out, the moisture just collects, and then your, your, your eyebrows and your eyelashes, it's fun. And you can see the Aurora Borealis. Let's go. Das Ru says, watch Shane's story. Of the Down syndrome in Thailand meeting ladyboys and you will know. <laughs> I mean, what does that say? Like that Bud Light is sponsoring a guy who says those things. Do we just accept it and say, please sponsor more of these people? <laughs> just keep doing it. Keep giving. You know what? Actually, I think it's fair to say the boycott does not end. Bud Light, you must give more comedians more money. Yeah. And you need to go 100 times harder in anti-woke comedy. Yeah, I agree. All right, we'll grab some more. What do we got? Angry Chris says DeSantis AG. Thoughts? Maybe. I think DeSantis may have really soured his opportunity with the Trump administration by the, the, the way he played it. But that's, maybe they're able possible. to separate, you know, the DeSantis on the campaign from 
DeSantis has the potential AG. I mean, he does have a career behind him before he ran for president. There was a time they had a friendly relationship. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and in politics, you know, they insult each other anyway because they're trying to win. So a lot of it is a little bit of political theater more than anything else. I can see a possible... Yeah. I don't know if AG... Uh, yeah, but probably a cabinet role or an advisory position or something. I, I did love Trump's statement after Vivek dropped out. He's like, I didn't like him before, but we like him now. It's amazing how you could like somebody <laughs> after they, you know, you know, they drop out. It was funny. <laughs> yeah. That's good, dude. All right. Where are we at? We got a couple more super chats here. We got a couple more super chats. Trump's tweets or his truth social posts, whatever they're called, truth. always make me laugh because the just looking at them, you can, it's like you can hear his voice. He had, <laughs> yeah. he had one today after Illinois said, you know, we're going to leave him on the ballot. It has to be something the courts decide. Uh, and he was like, I can't remember what it was, but he was like, this is your opportunity to reelect the very best president. And that's parentheses, me, exclamation point. Like, <laughs> they just seem me. like, ex exactly. You, you know, an aide isn't writing them, which is not true for most right. politicians. And that's why he said, Kafifi. <laughs> because he like sausage fingers the phone and then accidentally hit send. Yeah. And then when everyone's like, what is this? He was like, no one, no one will ever, will ever figure it out. Like he, he's like, he I just won't tell you. Yeah. Just he imagine that it. one of the most iconic political memes of all time was probably just Donald Trump sitting there on the bathroom. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. All right. Uh, Krasim says Dana White explained that Anheuser-Busch is a massive contributor to our military and other American charities. One mistake with Dylan BS does not outweigh that. Actions speak louder than words. I mean, that was my point. It's not just about should we accept their uh, apology or pseudo apology. It's not a real apology. It's when do you declare victory over your opponents? And my position is if this is the best we get out of Bud Light with UFC with Shane Gillis now, that's pretty good. And uh, I mean, Shane Gillis is massive. It's like the opposite of Dylan Mulvaney. Literally. Then you quite literally post videos of Shane Gillis saying all this anti-woke comedy and offensive humor and say, hashtag Bud Light. Thank you, Bud Light. And rub it in the woke left's face that they are losing control of these institutions. By all means, don't buy the Bud Light, but at least rub it in their face. Their, their slogan should be rebranded, Bud Light, the home of the hard R. Oh, wow. <laughs> Something like all right. that. I'm telling you, you have to get a marketing job with them. This is great stuff. All right, if Just you have... imagine how much they would sell. And they you, take out an ad slot on 4chan. <laughs> if you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends, head over to TimCast.com, click join us. You as a member help make all of this possible. But as a member, you can watch our members only uncensored show where things are not so family friendly. And that will be up in a few minutes. Uh, we will take callers from you, the audience. When you sign up at TimCast.com, you can also join our Discord server where you can submit questions to call in live to the show and talk to us and, uh, and the rest of the, the audience. Ask our uh, guests some questions. So make sure you do that. You can follow the show at TimCast IRL. You can follow me personally everywhere. Follow me on X at TimCast. Sticks, do you want to shout anything out? Yeah, at Stix666 official on Twitter, or you can find me at Stix Hexenhammer 666 uh, on pretty much any platform. Right on. Sweet. Yep. Um, pleasure having you, man. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Um, Carter Banks, you can follow me at, I still call it Twitter, at Carter Banks. <laughs> and uh, yeah, follow Trash House Records and Tim Cast Songs. We, both have, we, have, we have a new song coming out soon. We do. I need to talk to you after this. Uh, me and Jessica are working on some artwork for it. Cool. I'll run your eyes over it. But yeah, we, we're on a whole album. So I'm right. diving back into the mix of several songs. Hannah Clear. Hey, well, it's been fun having all of you here. Uh, I'm Hannah Claire Brimlow. I'm a writer for scnr.com. That's Scanner News. You can follow all of our work on uh, Instagram and Twitter at Timcast News. Uh, if you want to follow me personally, I'm on Instagram at hannahclaire.b and I'm on uh, Twitter at HC Brimlow. It's been super fun. Thanks, everybody who's listening. And Serge is here. Yes, uh, thanks for coming, Sticks. Appreciate it. Uh, it's been a long time coming and I've been watching you for a long time now too. So thanks, man. Appreciate it. Nice. Uh, I am Surge.com. I'm on the internet. I'm excited for the after show. Let's get to it, Tim. We will see all of you over at TimCast.com in about a minute. Thanks yep. for hanging out.